No, I'm here. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the program. Uh, my name is Dean. I want to uh, quickly thank all of our sponsors and all of our uh, our partners, including uh, Easy Auto Financial. This is brought to you by our friends at easyautofinancial.ca. Uh, if you need a car, you need finance, you can't find it, they're your people, easyautofinancial.ca. Ed's Fine Imports and his Gitch luxury underwear, boxer briefs. You'll want them. Go to edsfineimports.com today. Also, blue microphones. Uh, official partner of the DeanBlundell.com podcast network and Domination.com, D-M-N-T-N.com. Uh, try them today. They're AI for people that love to do content and don't have fucking hours and hours to sit and labor over a promo. Go to DMNTN.com today. Woo! What a weekend. What a weekend. And uh, we're back with a full compliment today, which is really nice. Uh, please welcome to the program. Uh, Lachlan Cross, James D. Fiore, and back for more, Right Said Fred's nemesis. Please welcome <laughs> right said Danko bestie. Jones, ladies and gentlemen. Danko's back. <laughs> good to be here, guys. Yeah? Is it? Yeah. Is it really good to be here? Is it great? Is it good? Are you? Because I was watching you on Twitter this weekend, and I'm like, fuck, this guy hates Right Said Fred. <laughs> You know, I, I, we were we were chatting about it before we went on the air a little bit, and I was saying yeah. that it's hilarious. That's why I dove in full force, you know, replying to their tweets. But at the same time, I was a little worried that I'd be end up I'd be the punchline to it because Wright said Fred are a joke, and if you engage with a joke, you become the punchline. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I got myself out of there right before I think things got worse. That, uh, that is a good. <laughs> Good strategy, Danko. Yeah, but it was fun. I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. I mean, it was. Yeah. Wait a second. Right said Fred isn't just one guy named Fred. No, there's. I know there's. There were people replying to just one person. It was made it even funnier. But That's what I did. Two guys. There's yeah. two guys. Okay, so what the fuck happened? Because right? uh, we and got Fred. lots to get to. Yeah, right. And then a guy named Fred, and one of them said, "No, I thought thing it was is, like, Fred's usually right." Yeah, yeah, I thought no, it was no. like this, right? Sorry. Said Fred, you know, like just one guy. I don't know. But, I don't even know. Okay, so so what happened? Because uh, let's get to some tweets. That's not the yeah, one. I, 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 I need some help. One. No. Okay, start? yeah. Uh, no, not that one. Right? Said <laughs> not Fred. That one. No, it's not that one. I got a bunch of these. Okay, here we go. Uh, and now, listen, here, the reason why you're looking at a tweet, this is from at Danko Jones. This is kind of oh, what, what endorsed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't access the tweet because in your fight with them, both you and James got me blocked by Canada's uh, least favorite Britpop band, which I is great. I'm on the podcast. I don't see how yeah. that would happen. I got fucking blocked. But it's uh, it, it, this. I don't know when this tweet happens, but it kind of encapsulates it. Uh, right said Fred has been going off. <laughs> Fuck, I can't believe I'm talking about right. Said I know Fred. it's awesome. <laughs> it's crazy. It's goes awesome. off on. Thing I've heard of all month. It's so <laughs> much fun. All <laughs> they go off on vaccines. They're fully anti-vax. I don't even I think they're in England. Who gives a fuck? Um, and you chimed in. I can't think of a better endorsement of our new power, our album power trio than to get the cheesy anti-vax right said Fred band making fun of our new single ship of lies. Thank you. Bell ends. If, if you're not familiar with what bell end is, it is a cock, by the way. It is the tip of a cock. Yeah. Think of and a it's bell. British. Think of a bell. Yeah. Oh, At the end. Oh, like, oh nice. <laughs> the top. Yeah, the yeah. bell end. How the take me through it, Danko. What okay. the fuck? Yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, we, I already known, I think they, it had been circulated on the internet that right said Fred were super anti-vax and they were, they were even making fun of people who got the vaccine. Like the, whoever is handling, if it's both of them or one of them, or they're going out of their way to harass, uh, you know, vac- pro-vaccine people. So I was aware of them. Some guy hate tweeted me for, for something or another. I can't remember why. I think it had something to do with my pro-vaccine stance. And then I said, well, you know, Oh, something about, and I tagged right said Fred in, in the context of, you know, like, you know, we're not what I can't remember why, but I tagged them and it had some, it had everything to do with vaccines and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so obviously if you tag someone, they can see it, but who knows? I mean, they've got billions of dollars to count. They don't have time well. to reply to me. <laughs> That's what I thought. Uh, well, they're way too sexy. <laughs> right. You know, every time every time I've tweeted directly at Eric Clapton, I've never gotten an answer from Eric. So I, I didn't think that they would answer, and sure enough, they did. But they not only did, but they they you could tell they kind of researched our band. They mentioned our new single, and they called it I can't remember they called it Tacky or something like that, and kind of insulted the new <laughs> single, which I I was like I called like, it right. Said Fred called your new single Tacky. Tacky or, or or something like something like you know terrible awesome. or something, which is such yeah, a compliment. Guys, yeah, it these was guys called you tacky. Such, That's awesome. Such a compliment. Rita McNeil I, called me fat once. I just wanted to let you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, but um, anyway, so you know, we went back and forth as you guys read, and uh, it just made for. Uh, a fun afternoon. And so that's basically it, uh, you know, in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. I was a little worried after like the second tweet um, that, oh my God, why am I, why am I going back why and am forth? I engaging with, here. Yeah. It's, it, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. It was hilarious though. Like, if, you're, if you're looking at it from our perspective and not Danko's perspective, I thought it was awesome because most people know what they're what right said Fred is like one hit wonder from yeah. a long time ago and yeah. your music like you're you're really well known over there where they live aren't you like 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 you know uh, there's um I don't know it, it was George Bale that told me that there's like an amazing sort of like cult following for you guys over there so maybe they're jealous as well you know what I mean well, because well, yeah. yeah they the, one of the things that they said in one of the tweets I don't know if you re- remember James is that uh they co-wrote with Taylor Swift oh, and it was amazing. later. And I don't know anything. I, I don't know anything about Right Said Fred, but someone said that they didn't co-write that Taylor Swift sampled their song on one of her new singles and they're calling it a co-write. Oh, and because the made label it, gave them a writing credit probably. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They're yeah. probably getting, yeah, they're probably getting writing credit. So, but to them it's co-writing. I hope it was amazing. just talk. Don't talk. Just kiss. Or the other hit, stand up. <laughs> or deeply dippy. Because that, it's amazing. That's an unknown song that should they, have been played on the radio. They could have had a mutual X. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, uh, I, I don't know anything about them past the s- sexy song from 91 or whatever. And I thought it was so much fun look to at engage. You nailing in. it. Look at you nailing it. I'm too sexy. Yeah, here's I got a question for you. Um, I, I know that that we all kind of have minimized right said Fred in our lives ever since that one tune, right? But did you have to when you were scrapping with these guys? Two questions. Was there any anxiety? Because because there's got it when blue check marks go at it, blue check marks some have like <laughs> armies of people, right? Right. So it's like so when 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 the blue check marks go at each other, it's not the other blue check mark guys like us are worried about. It's their legion of idiot fans that you kind of go, hmm, I don't know if I want that today, right? Was no there legion. That? No legion. <laughs> oh. That's what made well, it easier. Shocking. The support is coming. The support is coming. <laughs> Just they're waiting on it. Oh, it was no so legion much fun. there. Well, the it, it was so um, much fun. That exchange, the weird ahead, thing James. about that exchange, I thought, like, and the reason why I even chirped in was all of a sudden, right said Fred is like, Listen, our last, I'm paraphrasing. Listen, our last five years in the music business, 
lots of profitability. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> why would someone, why would an artist say something like that? Like, yeah, James yeah. had a great bullseye tweet there back at them, which was I, funny. I don't remember what I, some, it was something like, um, oh, that's the first thing I look for in a quality musician. Uh, the the state of their financial portfolio, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, exactly. You know. It's so funny. And then, funny. I, and then, I, then he got mad and said something, and I was like, um, "You're too testy for this thread," <laughs> something like that. <laughs> and then I left. You know, I I saw in our DMs, James like piped in just like randomly in the middle of another conversation. And he said something like, I can't get to that right now. I'm fighting on Twitter with right said Fred. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, let's just say he wasn't. Yeah. And he made that up. That's the most brilliant thing I think anybody could ever have said to get out of something that somebody was asking him to do. <laughs> That's funny. Hold on. Hang I'm on, guys. <laughs> I'm just fighting with right said Fred on Twitter. Yeah. I'll get it's to cool. that later. I got another it's call. Cool. It's Tiffany. I can't talk, guys. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is going on? What the fuck guys, is going on in the Guys, world I'm busy. Live? I'm busy. I'm hanging out with the guys from OMC. How bizarre. <laughs> da, 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 da. How bizarre. How bizarre. Oh. That's the thing is that I, I, you know, and this is kind of like the, the whole thing. And I you, listen, if you haven't followed Danko on Twitter, uh, you're not aware of his disdain, as is everybody's disdain uh, for people who like are militant anti-vax dickheads. Uh, this is about Joe Rogan. Uh, every time I post something that points out another stupid thing Rogan said, Rogan bros come out of the woodwork with cool facts about him. It's super <laughs> sweet, but super cringy. Cast members of news. <laughs> <laughs> listen to actual doctors was and a scientists great show. on I love COVID show. advice. Yeah, don't listen to cast members of news radio. <laughs> so funny. We need a. Bell. There's another one. Uh, some guy tweets. He says, "You've changed, bro. You're not the rocker I grew up with, Danko. Ah, since we've never met ever, let me tell you about myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pro vaccine, pro vaccine passports. I love rock, and the only way to get back into playing live club shows is to get vaccinated if your health permits. Also, dogs are terrific. Pizza's king, and Judas Priest forever, bro. <laughs> uh, but uh, let me ask you this, because you've really um, changed, like you've Janko. changed, man. I mean, all yeah. of a sudden you use common sense. What the fuck happened? Uh, you know, <laughs> the pandemic hit. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, one of the things that really uh, took my because like I, I'm, I'm a big fan. I don't know if you know this. I'm a big fan of like definitive language. Right. There's some real definitive language in this tweet. Quote, fuck anti-vaxxers. <laughs> They are the stuff your asshole makes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Good for you. Like, you know what? Danko, that leaves no I, room. I have for a lot of respect. <laughs> uh, can I? Can I just interrupt for two minutes here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Please. It sort of ties in. I I've been thinking a lot this weekend, and uh, I was gonna tweet and I, I or make a post or something, and I. I've completely, I've abandoned that, that thought pro pro process because I, I'm exhausted by the energy that it takes to, to do what you guys did with right said Fred all this weekend, as entertaining <laughs> as that is, I'm fucking exhausted by it. Like I, I just, I can't do it anymore. And see, I'm bombarded daily. Like we get up at four o'clock in the morning. I drive, I pick up a alcoholic midget. I go, I'm on the air for five hours on a terrestrial radio station here in Edmonton. And then I drive the midget home and we fight on text and social media with people that disagree with things that I say or things that I didn't say. And then I, I, I take a break. I have something to eat. And then I come downstairs and then we do this. And then I end up fighting on social media with fucking people about things I said or didn't say on this podcast. And it's just, I'm, I'm so done. My breaking point was Friday's press conference from Jason Kenny in Alberta, where instead of having the nuts to say, all right, we're going to shut down the whole fucking province for, an for anybody who isn't vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to open it up and we're going to do a, a vaccine passport. He goes instead chastises them and then says 
but we'll reward you. We'll give you a hundred dollars. Yeah. If you change your fucking mind about the vaccine, um, putting a chip in you or killing you, then we'll give you a hundred dollars to get vaccinated. Is that a Lachlan edit or did he say that? No, he said it. Yeah. What? No, no. He's give. He's he said I want to give you a hundred dollars if you get vaccinated. No, the chip thing. The chip thing that you no, said. No, he didn't mention that. Oh, okay, but I mean, okay. no, that so was I'm adding Lachlan that in there. I'm at. That's a Lachlanism. Okay, good. I'm adding <laughs> that in there. The guy that didn't get vaccinated that thinks there's a chip in it is probably not going to go get it if he's given a hundred dollars. Right. It worked right? in the states in a lot of places though. Did they had it? a lottery. They had a lottery yeah. there. Yeah. Did it work though? I I heard it Huge. wasn't that effective. Okay. Anyway, yeah, worked, maybe yeah. I'm wrong. Maybe I just realized when I watched that press conference that we're so we're so on our own that I think we just have to be responsible for our like individual selves and then trying to try expecting our public officials or anybody around us to do the right thing if they're not is just it's a waste of time. And if you do think that eventually there'll be common sense used or that that things will start to make sense in your life you're gonna it's gonna fucking kill you the stress is gonna kill you so mm. that's why i wanted to propose an idea dean and this is obviously yeah. on you as the curator of the dean blundell podcast but i think that thank you we should we should make sure that no one's allowed to watch or listen to this podcast unless they're vaccinated so we mm. should put together a vaccine passport and mm-hmm. demand it for, of anybody uh, watching a virtual vaccine passport. That's amazing. I love it. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I love it. it just from this, um, whenever it comes like into it. play, mm-hmm. we just demand it. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I think that that's not only a great idea for us three, but I think Danko Jones, who's got a new album out called power trio, which kicks some ass. Thanks. If Thank you, you love, no, you have no idea what you've done to me straight up with fucking rock trio. and roll. It is. It literally has reinvigorated my life when it comes to, oh, fuck, I miss guitars. I miss beats. I miss music. I miss rock and roll. So I think what we should do is is put a thing, a disclaimer on Power Trio. Same thing. You can't fucking buy this album unless you're fully vaccinated. <laughs> that might impact his profitability, you know, Dean. <laughs> that is a lesson I learned from Right Said Fred that... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> one, one takeaway I had from that, I yeah. learned from them. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, you know, I'm. That's the thing is what I also noticed with anti-vaxxers is they're not live music fans or music fans. I mean, if they were, you know, they would understand where we're coming from. You know, most people in bands are like, you know, got the vaccine. I was posting pictures of every person on in a band that got a vaccine that they were posting. I, I did huge collages of them. And it's because we're all wanting to do live music. There's we played together again last Sunday. Locke was there. Yeah, um, great set did, by the way. He was too busy. He didn't have any time to come back to you and say hi. But um, I, I, was I was drinking uh, in the VIP tent. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> but I, I mean, Danko did send me a DM. Um, where are you? I'm like, I'm drinking. <laughs> he says, "Well, I'm fucking leaving." That's yeah, your yeah, auto response. Go. That's your auto yeah. response, anyways. Your pre-programmed auto. Four thirty a.m. Yeah. We had a yeah. four thirty a.m. Yeah. lobby call lock, so we we had to get out of there. But yeah, um, but you know, you could you could do shows now because it's summer and it's outside. But once the winter comes, there aren't going to be any shows uh, uh, mm-hmm. unless there's vaccine passports because they're all going to be indoors and. Can you I ask you a, a, a question about the setup of the Together Again music festival that you just performed at, by the way, and your set was fucking phenomenal. And I have a couple of observations once Thank you. once you at once you respond to the question. What did you think of the set? How did you how did you feel as somebody on stage that's used to like sw- like I've seen you in sweaty fucking clubs where I mean I'm standing so close you're spitting on me. Right. And, and, and I've got, I'm being jostled around by people that are, you know, trying to move and, and, and go to the bar and get another drink. Right. Like, how so does what, go again? How, how does how that jostling feel? go again? Do you have a, yeah, I like that. Okay. So go yeah. ahead. Good. people love it when I walk up to the front too, right? <laughs> Six foot stupid. Oh, fuck. Who's the bald old fucker standing up front. Get to the back. You jackass. 
No. Yeah. How did That's you right. feel about how did you feel about the setup, Danko? Well, I made a tweet when I when I came home um, and I tagged together again, and I thought it was really well organized and the way they had it set up. They had tables that you buy five or six people to a table, and it was yeah. all the way back to the field. It, it felt like, you know, the proper responsible way to do this for now. Yeah. And I think, and also JC talked to the organizers. I, I didn't, I stayed in the dressing room, but he, he, he talked to them and, and there was, you know, I don't, I guess I shouldn't talk out of turn, but like you mentioned Kenny and, and uh, you know, like you said, we're all on our own. Well, live music's on our own with Kenny at the wheel in Alberta. Yeah. Um, I think Jason Kenny, um, I know I live in Ontario and everybody wants to shit on people in Ontario with their opinions, but, Jason Kenny is a villain to music. He's a villain to the arts. He's a villain to live music. And uh, it's just sad how much power he wields. Because he's um, worried about that 20% that, that he thinks got, got him in, right? That that religious right. Yeah. That, uh, and they're loud. And they're loud in his head. And, um, and they're loud, uh, you know, in the lobby groups, right? And I think that he's catering to them. I mean, we got to get past that point where we've got partisan politics deciding um, on on how to think. You know what? Like he he fucked up. Like he fucked up on Friday. I've never seen anything like that. I have never witnessed more anger so quickly from from a province from 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 its residents from one press conference as I've seen on Friday. People are fucking pissed everybody has why this though? idea but why about, are they pissed because because hold, pissed. hold it because I know, everyone why? wants the vaccine passport here and and they would well, they, they would vote for it and and not only that everybody knows that where we're at right now is because of the unvaccinated um mm -hmm. and to offer them a hundred dollars instead of doing the right thing and saying you know what you guys had all the fucking time in the world to get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. I'm done mm -hmm. trying to convince yeah. you that that's the right thing to do. Yeah. Now, moving forward, as of the end of September, um, we're we're implementing a vaccine passport. Come get it. Here's the yeah. web page. And then businesses, you guys do whatever you need to do. We're staying open. You guys need to do whatever you need to do for your business. And if that means, sh like, he shut down bars till 10 o'clock again. But, but exempted rodeos like what the fuck like it just it doesn't make any sense like you can't even make that up you're allowed to stay open and serve liquor till two o'clock in the morning if awesome. you're a rodeo but you have to shut down at 10 if you're a bar yeah. is that because and of indoors that, versus outdoors though yeah james i That's don't what they'll know say. it doesn't make any happen? fucking sense it's fucking yeah. retarded it's yeah it's fucking retarded it is mm. and the thing is is it could have been Really simple. You're not vaccinated. You're not allowed to do anything. Nothing. Mm -hmm. We're shutting so, the province down to you because this is spreading from the... Uh, and James, I see you sitting there squirming, but that's exactly what needs to be done. I, I, I mean... I'm thinking I, of I France. There's I'm no just, other... I'm just thinking of France. I'm with you. I'm on side. I uh, Listen, I, I told you guys last week that like I, I have come along slowly on this vaccine passport thing because the more that i started to unpack it in my own mind the more i want to see things like a sunset clause but i get why they are necessary right so i'm sort of like 70 percent where you are but i just if the calculus is to get more people vaccinated i still think that we're doing everything wrong I just do. I, I don't, but I don't know what the right answer is, but I, I know, I know that when I see Kenny and Ford, like you were just saying, Lachlan, they have the same problem. They, they are worried about the demographic that m makes them win elections. Right. Mm -hmm, so that's, mm -hmm. that's why they're dithering. Um, but win Trudeau, elections, we're getting the NDP back again. As of Friday, I am almost positive that Nutley is going to be uh, spending our way into a fucking pits of hell here in Alberta after after they get rid of Kenny. Because they'll roll his fat ass out of here at the end of his term, and then we'll just get the NDP back again. And yeah. we had an NDP provincial government in Alberta. We had an NDP provincial government in Alberta. And Kenny is setting us up to get them back. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm saying it now. I'm predicting it. What day is it? doesn't matter. Write it down. It's going to fucking happen. We're getting the NDP back. 
Okay, so, so so listen, outside the world of politics, and I think, Danko, you touched on something really Third important. Games. And and I can see, you know, and, and I know that in reference to what Lachlan's saying, like, fuck, we're all tired of fighting with people. We're all trying to convince t- people that science is legit and these vaccines work, as do masks, as do social distancing. Uh, but the vaccine passports is very, very interesting, specifically to gig guys like you, right? Like, uh, you know, it, it, w- watching you play a show uh, that you can play, if it is is only because vaccines work like the only reason you played a show is because vaccines work right like i mean obviously these these are ways that you make money it's the way that you drive revenue and it is fucking passports are so vitally important to gig workers that i completely get why guys like you get as angry as you do when there's a certain group of people prolonging the inevitable like you, you just said it earlier and you, you just said hey listen i can't i'm not we're not playing shows in the fucking winter because of this yeah. well we've we've announced shows in december uh and we did it we those shows were booked before doug ford announced the uh, vaccine passports we all knew it was coming but for people to get into those december ontario shows they have to be fully vaccinated and uh i'm fine with that so I'm, I'm good with that. Um, and uh, yeah, that's just how it goes. Uh, Kenny is a, I, I just wanted to finish my point with Jason Kenny. Beyond what's going on right now with the $100 for uh, people who aren't vaccinated, back in 2017, Jason Kenny introduced um, a tax for international touring musicians, basically almost killing live music in Canada that isn't domestic. Um, and so, no one would have enjoyed any any kind of B to C level bands uh, coming in due to Jason Kenny. Uh, your the cool rock band that you you and your your friends like that put out their underground album, they would not be able to come to Canada because of Jason Kenny. People forget about that. And I haven't. And when I when I when I see and I recognize a villain of music, I remember that person. And then I then he popped up as Alberta's premier. And look what he's doing now. Doug Ford did the same thing when his brother Rob was the mayor. Uh, he started mm-hmm. handing out twenty dollars bills to people. If you remember that, guys, yeah, back do, in Ontario. Yeah. So I mean, this is this is. He was doing it in low income do. housing units, right? Like he was going it, into more low disgusting. Income it was so he was yeah. like he was like Bumpy Johnson. Remember? Is from that, is that illegal? Going turkeys be- out of the back of a cube van, you know? <laughs> That's got to be le- illegal, no? I think. Yeah, I think he got. I don't know if it, yeah. I mean, why? Yeah, it's like it. buying votes, right? Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. sounds illegal. Yeah, he sounds. Yeah, illegal. it is illegal. It is illegal. Yeah. But but it was but it was something that him and his brother did. Is the same thing. The same reason why politicians throw barbecues, community barbecues for people, and you know, splash out for a couple grand worth of buns and stuff like that. <laughs> it's 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 what it's what they all do. It's it's like this this thing where if you want to get people on side, you incentivize them with food or money. Like I mean, yeah. especially if if these people are uh, low income. And 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 to Alberta for a second, you know, it, it, when when you look at, at someone like Jason Kenny, whose entire goal is himself mm-hmm. um, as as an artist, and then you watch what's happening in that province. Um, there, there, there's got to be a fear, right? Like trying to tie this into the federal election. There's got to be a fear of a guy like Aaron O'Toole getting in as the prime minister, knowing how tight he is with Kenny, how he shares the same vision as Jason Kenny, how they have the same kind of uh, modus operandi when it comes to people not being vaccinated as it relates to your business, Danko. I'm totally, yeah, I, I'm totally uh, scared about that. And I've tweeted, is this your way of posting some tweets that I did to uh, Aaron O'Toole? No, that- no, I don't oh, have any okay. of those. Oh, they're, they're out there. <laughs> Is this a setup oh. for for another slideshow? <laughs> hey Dean, go ahead and throw up the tweets now. No, it's not. <laughs> Little known fact, guys: no, no. Aaron O'Toole's favorite artist. <laughs> right, said Fred. So. <laughs> I don't know whether or not. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm not exactly sure how in line Rob Ford, Jason Kenny, and Aaron Toole are. I mean, he, the, the one thing that I I've sort of been watching over the last little while. Does anybody believe any promises anybody makes politically anymore? I mean, 
they stand up at these podiums and they do these press conferences and this is what we're going to do. And none of it ever gets done. And it, it it's not even a, a, the conservatives. It's, it's not even, it's all of them. They yeah. all make these fucking wild fucking promises and nothing. I mean, they achieve maybe five or 10% of what they actually said they were going to do. Um, so what are we voting on? Are you voting on them promising that they're going to do something that's never going to happen? Or are you voting on the possibility they'll do something awful that, there's, that they there's might do along lining. party lines? Like, there's, I mean, there's, I, I, there's a silver lining to that, though. Um, and what you're saying is exactly true. But I don't know if you'd notice, but the one group that's being excised by all the parties are that far right sort of like libertarian People's Party of Canada people. Aaron O'Toole just basically turned his back on them. What was it yesterday when he flipped on that gun stuff? So and he also pissed off a lot of conservatives, but he's gone so far to the middle and even a shade to the left on some of his policies now that he's banking on disenfranchised liberals moving towards him. That's that's his strategy right now. He's a abandoned the far right and he is hoping that disenfranchised liberals will will come on side to the conservative I don't cause. hate I mean I, I don't, don't know hate, what's going to happen but we the thing is I think that's that's part of the bigger issue right now with what's happening in Canada politically is that they're still living in this this partisan sort of thought process whenever they're campaigning and you know what, man? You got to throw that out the fucking door. You, get rid of it because there are, there's this huge chunk, and it's it's it is seventy percent of the population that sits in the middle, that just has given up any idea of of like I I have no idea what party even like even remotely represents my views of life. Like the liberals clearly don't, the conservatives clearly don't. And you, and you sit there and you make a decision based on what we, sh what you should do politically in that ballot box. And I have no fucking clue. I go back and forth every day. And it's because I, it's because the issues they keep bringing up, I, I'm never on side with any of them. Mm -hmm. Right. Like mm -hmm. I, I honestly don't agree with anything coming out of anybody's mouth and I don't trust any of them at this point. And I'm not alone I, for them to, to flip flop on an issue. I, I don't know if that, like who fucking cares? We're voting now on let's get rid of the guy that was there before. And hopefully like, who are we going to put in there? That's going to like do the least amount of damage. That's mm -hmm. that's the way I think most people think now. They don't think about, well, you know what? My dad was a grant. My dad was a conservative, so I think I'm going to concert. No one votes like that anymore. But they still live there. I, maybe we, maybe the media does too much to fucking position you politically when they're having conversations on panels and everything like that. And maybe that's why we still live there. But that's got to be a thing of the past sooner than later. No. Like, like, is a liberal liberal anymore? Is a conservative a conservative anymore? Like, and what the no fuck knows. is the NDP? Oh, the only thing I know about the NDP is they're just going to spend us to death. Like, they're just going to spend a bunch of money. Like, I mean, well, well, no, no one knows. And, and I think, I think that kind of, you know, and, and, and listen, I don't want to bring up Theo Fleury uh, and, and the horrificness of, I, I, cause we're talking about um, people that don't trust the government, right? Like, you know, and and, I, and it's funny because I watched Theo Fleury uh, lose his shit last night. He put this tweet out with vaccine passports. Pedophiles will know where your kids at at all times. Uh, and he got absolutely fucking dragged on Twitter. And I was I started kind of doing some thinking because I had a conversation with a friend of mine the other day. And, and this is kind of to what Danko fights against. It's what we all fight against is this extreme libertarian view. Um, this 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 human being that not only doesn't believe in any of these things, they think they're out there protecting us or another group of people, right? Like they really do. That's like you keep saying, oh, you're, you're not woke enough. You're not waking up. You're not this. You're not that. Wake up, everybody. This, that's what I hear all the time. Theo says it all the time. Wake up, everybody. These people are out to get us. And, and then I started to kind of break down the profile of the kind of person that I know that votes PPC or that is an extreme libertarian or wants to fucking watch the world burn. All of these people individually, and in the case of, of Theo Fleury, I think we can point to why he doesn't trust authority, right? <laughs> yeah. I think we can, like, 
Literally, yeah. you, you you can point to. I, I feel bad for Theo. I mean, his, I do too. What he's I do too. Through. I'm I'm watching people fucking drag him. And while I get it, like if he's just like everybody else who we hate and we can't stand their perspective because it's a dangerous one, we kind of have to dig into why they're the way they are. And a large portion of these people have been let down by authority at some point in their life. And we all know Theo's story uh, in terms of the sexual abuse he suffered at the hand of Graham James for years, and how he kept that a secret. It doesn't give people an excuse to be dangerous, but at the very least, we can kind of understand. Uh, because, listen, I, I, and I said this in a post today about Theo Fleury. I said, you know, I, I didn't have my innocence stolen by a guardian. Therefore, I don't have these same trust issues he has. But if I did... I probably would feel the same way about all authority trying to make me do anything with my body that I didn't want, right? And and I think critically thinking this thing through, with, like, right said Fred, who gives a fuck? I mean, the only reason those guys are talking about anti-vaccinology is because they, A, don't understand it, and B, they're just looking for some attention, right? Yeah. A guy like Theo Fleury, I don't know if he's looking for attention, but you no, know, we, go so, we go so far he in believes, discrediting he believes that. He totally does. He really believes like he really, truly believes that he's protecting children because he was abused as a child. He really believes that. And I believe that he believes that while I believe that that bleeds into other aspects of his life when it comes to trust issues and where we're at and telling people not to get vaccinated. And I completely disagree with it. I think it's batshit crazy. At the very least, we could come around to understand it a little bit, right? Like we kind of can 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 draw from from his experiences why he is the way he is and then we can kind of treat him with kid gloves and we can get after it if we want we you could treat him however you want but at least you understand that part of that society that doesn't trust anybody because i do i mean it makes perfect sense to me well i think in, in the case of theo um i i'm i i stayed away from when as soon as i saw his name pop up and i and then I went and I saw the tweet that got the attention. I was like, I'm not digging into that. I'm going to leave that Dude, alone. Dude, I was afraid to actually, like like to what we were talking about earlier with Danko, I was like the, the blue checkmark brigade. I was afraid to fucking write the story. And I wrote a pretty good, you know, supportive story of his position, even uh, though I think yeah. he's fucking crazy. Yeah. I didn't yeah. understand like, his position. I didn't understand the, I don't the, either. the line that went from, if you get the passport, pedophiles know where your kids are. Is there a database? Like where kids are like matter. BPSs? In, he but, thinks but hold any, on, but, any as sort a person of documentation under, yeah, is yeah, bad. Yeah, I know. And as a person who kind of understands um, the veneer that's left when an authority figure does things that they shouldn't do, um, and then thinking dangerous thoughts like burning down Catholic churches, for example, um, <laughs> it, it does. I do have a – there's a spot that, that I'm like, I don't want – Dude, I, I go in whenever I want to go in and I wanted to go in and then I just totally profoundly did not want to go in because I thought this man was motivated by pain and uh, mental health issues yeah. and the past. And mm -hmm. I'm sorry that he feels that we're all a bunch of GPSs as soon as the vaccine or the passport gets connected or whatever. But um, there's a reason he feels that way. And that reason is so dark that it's difficult yeah. to, to make fun of. You know? But then but that's, that's the, you can say that with all the other anti-vaxxers, they have their own personal histories and they yeah, have their we own know stories. His. We know his. Yeah. And right. We know what it was. Right. So it's yeah. like once you know that data, but you're Danko's like, oh, right. You know? Danko's right. right. That that's and that actually that's something that I've been dwelling on a little bit. Right. Because I wanted to post something this weekend that would deliberately upset that group of people. Right. And I'm like, mm, <laughs> I don't need to do that. And not, and I wasn't yeah. so much worried about the effort it would take to respond to every, because I have this sort of, I have this um, thing about social media and the job that I hold down in that I attempt and, and I don't, I'm not always successful. I attempt to respond to everybody that sends me at least a question or a direct note. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm like, ah, even the assholes, e e even the people that I don't agree with that are trying to just to, to make me angry by replying back to me. I, I even try to get back to them. Uh, and that, that, that moment for me this weekend was sort of the deciding factor. I don't know everybody's stance on it, but then the other part of that is, and, and I sort of alluded to it earlier is that if you're like Theo Fleury, 
and you think that there's some sort of tracking mechanism in the vaccine, what kind of an effort are you going to need to convince that man that that's not true? Like, Mm. I don't know. I don't even know where to begin because I think that that's where that, that, that tweet stems from. I honestly think that man thinks that if you get the vaccine, there's a fucking chip in you. He might, he might believe that, but it, it, I kind of can ga- gauge where it comes from. Sorry, Danko, you're going to say something, and then I'll ask. Well, you a I was just going to say, like, I understand we all have empathy for people who have mental health issues and who have gone through through abuse. Definite empathy. What made me tweet the 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 tweet that Dean posted about uh, what uh, assholes make? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was a yeah that one. If you read what I'm quoting. It's a bunch of anti-maskers who were um, keeping, who are barring cancer patients from mm-hmm. from going into the hospital. Now, yeah, all the anti-vaxxers might have been touched with abuse and ha- have experience with that, but I can tell you, everyone has had um, experience with cancer in their family or around their family. Yeah. So that really triggered me to to post mm-hmm. that as well. I'm okay so, with you doing that, Danko. What I said and what I did, my decision not to post something just to deliberately piss people off this weekend. I wasn't judging anybody who does. Uh, trust me, I fucking thoroughly enjoyed the right said Fred stuff. I, I mean, <laughs> I can still. I just chose it for myself because uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, but, I'm, but, I'm done. But, I'm but exhausted. Hold it, hold it. I don't know what the right I, answer is anymore. I, I totally. I, I you know what? Into those waters just for my yeah. own entertainment, right? But. But but you know what I, I think I think what what we're what we're all kind of getting at here is what this does to us right yeah um, and when Danko what Danko's referring to and why I loved that tweet so much um, was because of exactly what he said those dickheads militant dickheads prevented people with stage four fucking cancer to get from chemo. getting to their chemo appointments yeah it's just, it's like they beyond made, disgusting. That's you know, awful. it's like, and and they did it on purpose. They 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 wanted to create a scene. They wanted to prevent people from getting better. And but the weren't irony they touched in this by whole- cancer weren't those anti vaxxers touched by cancer too? Yeah. Whether it was themselves or, or family have, members, yeah. like we all have. Everybody, it's not. But that's what I don't get. I think it's worth it, it's worth pointing out that when um. Anytime you see a protest downtown, whether it's Black Lives Matter or remember the taxi cab drivers when Uber came out and they all protested in downtown Toronto, there were small stories um, and they would have been sort of, uh, um, uh, you know, ex- they would have been accentuated more in the media if, if you know, the media did their job. But there was there was a story in the cab protest where an ambulance couldn't get to the hospital and the person died. The Black Lives Matter protest. Um, same idea. There was a woman that had to give birth in uh, in an ambulance instead of being at the hospital because the protest protests that stop traffic, whether it's right outside of the hospital or if it's downtown, is I it just feel like it's an archaic way to protest because of that, because of the safety, yeah, poss- the the lack of safety possibilities between uh, ambulances and hospitals and every the and hospital like that. protests that have been going on recently with the anti maskers are being done on purpose though to That's block deliberate. people yeah. to yeah. getting medical attention yeah. i mean if there's a protest downtown edmonton uh for i don't know afghanistan or or any host of other issues that are happening around the world and they and happen they accidentally to, yeah. or happen to block something they're not doing it on purpose this was motivated and that yeah. that's what makes it a little a, a touch more egregious in my yeah, the premeditation does set it apart. Yeah, it does. Yeah, the, the end result might be similar, but yeah, it, when they it's do it, it's crazy. Up. Yeah, yeah, and and I I think you can draw pretty stiff conclusions from you know people that are dumb enough to take what they think is their fucking personal freedom and prevent a dying individual from trying to get better because yeah. of it. Like that's what we're talking about here, right, Denko? That's like, I mean, it's that's fair game to me. I mean, it, it, if we're going shitting on people a la carte, uh, they're first in my opinion. Like, they should be in our line of fire. We should be drawing attention to that kind of stuff. Uh, it's criminal. So yeah. there you go. I think it's criminal. No one's calling it criminal. I, I think it's criminal. And I, I just read in one of the uh, 
comments that are going from the audience that there's anti-vaxxers who are uh, going to be protesting at schools tomorrow or, or on Thursday mm -hmm. or something like that. Uh, Thursday in Ontario is the first day of school and there's anti-vaxxers who are going to show up at these schools. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it is, it is kind of crazy. The thing for me too, like another moment I had this weekend is I was talking to a, a friend of mine and uh, he's a teacher. And, uh, and I said, hey, I said, Jeff, are you back? And, uh, and he says, no, I'm still, I'm still working from home and um, we're, we're still doing the remote and uh, the school that he works at, he's a, he's a, a professor at a university in town here. And he said, we sat down as a faculty about three months ago and we took a look at what was happening and we all came to the same conclusion that um, there would be a fourth wave, that it would be caused by the unvaccinated and uh, that uh, our government officials that, Sorry. Uh, and that our, that our public officials would probably not do much to protect us from the fourth wave. So we actually just put a plan in place to, um, to do remote. And I'm like, you know what? We are so fucking on our own. We are so on our own right yeah. now. And I've never felt more like that in my life. I, I, and I'm an anti-government person in that I want to take power away from them. Not because I don't think that they should be doing things to protect us, but just because I never trust them to do the right thing. When you when you sit back and and, and take a look at what's been happening over the last couple of years with politics locally, provincially, federally, you can almost guarantee that there's a 60, 65, 70% chance that they're probably going to make some mistake, even if it's, if it's unintentional at the time. And it's just, it's fucking chaos. And the fact that they sat down and predicted this was a, like an aha moment for me, right? Like they sat down and went, there's going to be a fourth wave. Our public officials are going to make them continue to make mistakes. We got to fucking prepare this upcoming school year ourselves We're, we, yeah. we can't trust the authorities to make the decisions we need to make in order to keep people safe so we're just going to do it ourselves and i'm like holy fuck yeah and and, and i, I isn't, trust isn't that he's not, that's kind of the he's not lying like, he, I, yeah. yeah yeah go ahead i was just going to say he he I, I know for a fact that he's not making that up that three months ago mm -hmm. they had a board meeting on zoom all of them and they made this decision Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So, so Danko, tell me this. I was going to ask you this earlier. Like, what is in the music community, right? Like, if if the goal is to get back to live music, um, what do what do you notice about those musicians that still have that anti vax perspective? Because I find that I find that weird. Like, that's crazy. If that's your goal to get back and to say you don't want to be vaccinated and you don't want uh, masks and all the other stuff. Like, what? who are those people and why I, I, it, to me, I it just makes business sense. I don't know who those are or are those people. I only, I don't know. Everyone I know who's in a band has gotten vaxxed or, and is pro vax. And there isn't one standout person, not even one who's just like, Nope, not getting it. And this is everybody's on board. Everybody I know. Like I was saying, when everybody, when they were rolling out the vaccines, especially in America, were first and everyone was getting in, they were showing their card and they were posting on Instagram. I would take that photo and I would make collages. So everyone, you know, yeah. whether it's this small, this guy in a really small band, he's right next to Paul Stanley and they all mm -hmm. got their vaccines and they're all fully vaxxed. Um, I don't There's know. Probably some drummers, Danko. Wasn't going to say. It's a joke. Wasn't going to say. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Can I make some observations quickly about the show uh, yeah. that that you uh, performed in Edmonton at the Together Again on the weekend? Oh, okay. I okay. First off, uh, I loved the fucking new songs. And oh, they, thank you. Um, the the only thing that I could tell that you guys hadn't played in a while was I could tell that you were out of shape a little bit. Like I could see you every once in a while trying to catch your breath. And uh, so that was the only thing I thought you guys did a great job. And I fucking loved watching JC. JC was so fucking happy. He was, you, every time I looked over at him, he had a fucking huge grin on his face. And it was just like, 
the world's back to normal again. I and I, you guys had a great set, man. I hope you guys get a chance to tour this fall and everything doesn't go from shit to fuck again. Got to address the out of shape comment right away. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, first of I all, saw it when as soon as you said it, I saw Danko's face, and this was his face. First of all, um, let's back up here. We did two live streams on the Saturday, yeah, and then we had an early lobby call to fly out to Edmonton on Sunday. No excuses. However, I still have to get my breathing down for the new songs. There's two songs that we did um, that are new that I didn't have my breathing down for, and. When I was doing the live streams, the in-between song banter, I didn't have to like, I didn't um, expend so much energy that I usually do in a live show yeah. because there was nobody there. And then the second one, there's 50 people there. But then, you know, seeing the mass amounts of people in Edmonton, my adrenaline kicked in and I, I wasn't thinking properly and I, I uh, used my voice too much and then no excuses. But the two songs, there's two songs where I didn't have my breathing down. All the other songs were performed flawlessly, Locke, and I, I was totally in shape for it. You're talking about three shows in a row with, like, early lobby calls. So I don't know about the uh, uh, out of shape uh, comment. No, I don't know if no, it's okay. worth it even addressing. It might have been a little harsh. It was a little harsh on my but part. But I just got to get my breathing down for the new songs. It takes, it takes a few attempts, maybe about yeah. a dozen or two dozen uh, songs, uh, I mean, uh, shows. And, and then I'll have the breathing down. Yeah, that yeah. was the, uh, there was, a, and I knew I probably noticed it during those two songs. Cause I remember looking over at uh, Grant and I'm like, I think he's a little out of fucking breath. Maybe I, I it's was not playing. Yeah. It. I, yeah. Yeah. I didn't, um, I didn't have it down. I, I, I got to admit it, it takes it. To, and this, because of YouTube, there's, if you dig deep enough, there's people who, uh, when we first started playing songs 10 years ago and it was the first time someone posted it on YouTube and all the comments are like, man, you don't even know how to sing properly or you can't. It's like, but now I can sing that exact song flawlessly. It's annoying. YouTube sucks, man. I was wondering, Danko, when you were talking Lachlan. about when you were talking about your breath control, um I, like I know hip hop artists, I actually happen to be one of them. When I do a double time thing for sixteen bars, I take one breath, maybe two. But do your does your breath control rely more on the length of the words or the power in which you deliver them, or both? It's it's a no, it's a power because I had um, I had expended all all the energy with the in between song banter because uh, we were outdoors and there was like tons of people. Uh, in, on this big, huge football field, and and just the adrenaline of seeing that many people, um, and and wanting to make sure that the person at the end of the field can hear me, I just end up expending more energy, and you're just like <gasps> out of breath. Mm. Um, you should try breathing more deeply into your balls, Danko. Oh, for fuck's sakes! Yeah, you should. It's a thing. Did you know that? Yeah. Did you know it's breathing into your nuts is a thing? Yeah, I, I've heard that semen, uh, keeping your semen in, yeah. um, is a thing for running for the PP, <laughs> the PPC. <laughs> yeah. So, dude, I I saw this guy yesterday, and you could use some of his tips. <laughs> Just got that, Jamesy. Thanks. You could yeah. use some of his tips because he's a PPC candidate in New Brunswick. Uh, this is the dude. His name is Nicholas Pereira. Uh, but Nicholas Pereira during the his downtime is a, a guy named Nakula Das. And what he does is he teaches people how to be semen retention soldiers, guys. Semen retention soldiers. Uh, <laughs> he also does classes for people in how to retain your semen uh, because what, what, what re semen retention does is Read it makes you apparently... To your balls. Makes your balls bigger. Uh, but but it also allows you to be more productive in, in your life. Now now I'm not joking. Like this guy is literally running for the PPC <laughs> oh in New Brunswick. <laughs> That's him in in his political role as as uh, Nicholas whatever Pereira. This is him as the ball filling expert, uh, Nakula Das. What's that mark on his no word of a lie. forehead? I, it's like, like tribal does for that help jizz. You I think into your balls. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Well, I'm sure I'm sure it grows your testicles bigger and, and you can get more you you become more productive. Like but what he doesn't shirt. mention is it turns you into a giant asshole for the people around you. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's not like Costanza. It Didn't Costanza turn it into it a out. genius? Uh, no, on, but dude, that's, that's, that's literally what he thinks. That's exactly. That's what he thinks happens. Here's a video. He plagiarized here. Seinfeld. Totally. He to, just, he yeah. took a Yeah, exactly. Uh, but th this is a video, by the way, just so you know, uh, if you want to book a complimentary session, no problem. It's free, but one-on-one -on -one coaching, 15 grand US for a 90 day one-on-one -on -one oh, thing. With wow. this guy. Hey, it's worth oh, it. I need grand. to expand my balls. I love wow. this guy. He's my favorite new politician, but watch yeah. this as a quick two minute video and how he says hello to all of his fans. He's got like 6,000 subscribers on YouTube. It's fuck. the retention soldiers. When you run your day with intention, it's easier to practice semen retention and no fap because you're not distracted. What the <laughs> fuck is going on? <laughs> that guy's schizophrenic. On? He has to be <laughs> schizophrenic or something. What's going on? Wait, wait, wait. wait Plus wait, his head looks like a giant testicle. Don't guard their minds. They allow their minds to be pulled. As soon as somebody calls, they got to answer. If somebody messages, they got to answer. They get a notification on social media, they got to look at it. This is the sign of a mind that isn't under control and therefore is going to Link. waste a lot of time unknowingly. You know, people Link. finish their day and they're like, I barely got anything done. Where did the day go? Well, all of those little indecisions, all of those little conflicts that you dealt with throughout the day, you know, the should I, shouldn't I, should I eat now, shouldn't I eat now, should I do this, should I do that? <laughs> all of that is time being wasted. What happens when you practice sexual alchemy and you join me inside of the semen retention army? <laughs> <laughs> what a that's stop. What, it, what a stop. <laughs> that's what individual sperm would call themselves if they could talk. The semen, semen retention. He's, a, he's half done. You become I, laser I am. focused on a few key aspects to your life. One of them being your sexual energy. Because mm. you bring laser focus to your sexual energy, you begin mm. to become so conscious or so aware of how this energy can be used in multiple ways. So yes, it can be used in a sexual expression, but it's creative power, it's drive, it's hot white desire. And when you keep hot white passionate desire within you, it comes out as desire for improvement. You want to make more money. You want to uh, up-level your relationship. You want to up-level your body, your health. Nature literally pushes you to become more attractive and sexy so that it can express that in a sexual way. But because you're a man of wisdom, a man of knowledge, you're a SEMA retention soldier. <laughs> I love the stops. <laughs> His rapper name is probably white hot desire. A serious imagine. question. Is this yeah, but is this is this a drug thing? Like is there something going on there? No. No, this guy's a politician. I'm and trying he's to take a federal look at his office in New eyes. Brunswick. Like is that's him. Like, I'm trying to see if his pupils are pinned, but his eyes are so black that maybe it's the semen retention. These, by the way, are the uh, type of fringe candidates that, that fringe candidates that you see in uh, like a mayoral election. Uh, mm -hmm. Like there's yeah. a ton of people like this. I, 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 ran, I, I was a federal. Yeah, I was a fringe candidate in the 2010 election that Rob Ford won, and I would go to mm -hmm. these debates, and it would be like, like a guy with a clown nose, you know. Uh, a girl wearing like seven cardigans, right? A um, semen retention specialist, <laughs> right? Exactly, and, there was, yeah. and that's and it was filled with uh, people like that. So the, I guess Bernier is onto something. He's getting all the circus performers and the carnies yeah. to come out. The last party. election uh, mayor election in Edmonton had uh, one guy who wanted to bring smoking back to uh, bars. That was his entire platform. It's all he wanted to talk about. And we had another woman. Her name was Carla Frost. And she used to, in every debate, she used to just threaten to fight the other candidates. You want to fucking go? You want to fuck? I'll fucking go. Like, I swear to God. And we, every time we talked about her on the air, we would just, yeah. we would play the Game of Thrones music. And we would talk about the frost is coming. <laughs> and uh, we were begging her to, to um, re-enter this this most recent race, but she didn't, which is unfortunate to say the least. Yeah, well, it's just it's fucking amazing to me that that like this guy's running for federal politics. This guy, like, do do the the guy who and this is his day job. L get a load of this.
Get a load of this if you want to master your sex. Super easy. He's got simple tantric methods you can use right away to last much longer in bed. How to have non-ejaculatory orgasms. The difference between male orgasms and ejaculation, they'll teach you the difference. How to overcome porn addiction. I've never met anybody that wants to overcome an addiction to porn. How do you use your sexual energy to manifest a life of abundance in uncertain times? Doesn't matter. That's totally not fucking legit. The scientifically proven benefits of semen retention. Uh, they literally tell you to get it out of you as fast as you can. Uh, and how to how to live the semen retention lifestyle without blue balls or sexual frustration. And here's the great part. When you become a sexual alchemist, you guys, you can have sex for as long as you want. You overcome premature ejaculation. You have confidence in your sexual and non-sexual abilities. You get to charge your brain with energy. That's what full balls do. That's what he said in the other video. I, I'm not going to play because we don't have time. Uh, it harnesses the power of sexual energy for creativity. He practice semen retention safely. Um, th th these, All of these things, all of these things are his day job. And these wow. are the politicians that we're actually putting up for people to vote for. That's why I love this guy. I love this guy because we complain all the time that we have liars and we have people. Gonna, this guy is living his best life. Like, is <laughs> yeah. he nuts? For sure. But the guy's got 6,000 fucking followers. He All he does is do videos on how to heap semen in your nutsack. Yeah. And somehow he's qualified to run for office. I think he's just as qualified as the dill holes that we're fucking looking at right now of well, putting in office. Like, I really I, do. Maxine Bernier is probably... Uh, he might be a bit of a genius. He's realizing that we're at a point where people are going to vote for guys like this. Like we're at a point where we're like it would happen down in the U S we're not that far away here in Canada. They, you don't think Trump got in. They, I think you're right. Lock ready to that, burn it down. And then Max and Bernier wants to put people like that in, but I think he also wanted to try to run a candidate in, in as many ridings as he could. And he was like, all right, fuck it. Put the goddamn semen guy in, I guess. Tab on that. You know, like I think. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, yeah. I, I'll send him a note. But the, uh, the if you're having orgasms without ejaculating, that's called alcoholism. And... <laughs> That might be a bigger issue. Maybe this maybe this guy went on an edging, you know, like like guys like to edge and 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 edge and edge and I've some never people liked to edge for a weekend. What guys like to well, maybe edge? This guy what edged for so long that, that he what is it? Edging is when you what like either edging? either with your partner Retaining. or by yourself, yeah. you you masturbate or get pleased, and then right before you're about to come, it gets squeezed and it yeah. doesn't. Or you and then you can slap along. she slaps you. Yeah, who does that? Stop it! I Where, don't know. Who, no one does. Who does that? Videos. And how is it that I didn't know anything about edging? Like I would have assumed that that would have been like <laughs> I've done in it here I for years. Do it, James, but done it. Yeah. <laughs> James, what is what happened? So hold it. The idea is to get you to the point of like uh, almost you know getting to the point, yeah. and then you. I did yeah, it for a weekend it. once. I was on an exceptional amount of ecstasy. a whole fucking weekend. <laughs> Well, yeah, I was on a lot of E, maybe a little bit of something else. And and I and like so it'd be like, OK, you what fool else? around, you fool around for a half an hour. <laughs> you fool around for a half an hour and then you do that. And you squeeze, you stop. And then an hour later, you do it again. for. And so like after like 25 times over a weekend of edging and not having an orgasm, the orgasm is like, holy Jesus. It's like a sprinkler. It's like <laughs> you can do anything you want, right? Like paint the walls, you know, fill up shot glasses, that's whatever you need to do. Yeah, that's we so had uh, we tried the three of us on the locker room tried to not jerk off for Lent, and um, <laughs> <laughs> we had a wager on it. <laughs> I can't remember what the wager was, but I'll give up. Um, I'll give up edging for Lent next. Time. I love how you, you gave up jerking in. off for a Catholic holiday. Yeah. Jimmy came in. Jimmy came in like three days and said that uh, he was trying to avoid whacking off by edging, and then paused and said, "Didn't work. I'm out." And then still, so. because there's a point where you're like, if I keep going, I might. And it's it like, doesn't right to the edge, and then you're like, ah, and then all of a sudden you just yeah. like, right, fuck, got to start over. The fact that Jimmy lost it. our Lent challenge by trying to by attempting to edge. Mm -hmm. um, was just, uh, again, unintended content from the alcoholic little person on the show.
Awesome. <laughs> uh, hey, Danko, appreciate you being here, dude. Um, thank you. I did and, not and, know uh, it would go. We would take a, a, a turn and start uh, talking about You should about have edging. been prepared for that. <laughs> yeah. I'm first of all, I glossed over the fact that when James started to explain it, you quietly went, yeah, yeah, here's what it is. And then like you knew. I did know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah, can't I, believe you you've never heard know. of edging, Dean. Come on. Never in my life. You worked never at the heard edge. Of it. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> now we know what the new uh, radio station was named after. <laughs> Uh, uh, the the new album from Danko is called Power Trio. It's really fucking good. And I said this to you before we got on the air. Uh, it literally, between that record and Ian's new record with Big Rec, uh, it literally reinvigorated my love for rock and roll. And I've gone back and I've listened to like five or six different albums I haven't listened to for a long time. It is very, very, very good. If you want to download a new album uh, and you love rock and roll and you love Danko Jones, even if you, you're, this is new, even if you're like, oh, Danko Jones plays rock and roll and you weren't too sure and you're a hip hop person or you're from you know alberta and you like country music and you're watching this podcast this is this is one of canada's most pure rock and roll human beings and uh his album's terrific so make sure you get it thanks danko really appreciate you being thanks, here thanks guys thank is you your dean is that your thanks, james yeah yeah it's okay. no, congratulations man congratulations yeah, yeah. thanks a lot it's thank fucking you. so good we'll talk to you soon brother thank you Thanks, guys. Anytime. That is Danko Jones, ladies and gentlemen. Danko, of course, a new album called Power Trio, which you can uh, download anytime. James has a guest. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Hey, Luck. Yeah. You know who this guy is? I am so excited about this. I can't hear Boy. anything. You guys ladies and gentlemen, Mike Bullard. Pop, pop. So, Mike you Bullard. Get over here, gentlemen. Bullard. Get in front of that mic. Come on. Get in, Get in front, front of the, the mic so we can hear you. That one. Um, first of all, first of all, I can't believe that uh, you guys haven't murdered each other uh, for the you know amount what? of time you both. Everything was great What's till that? this thing started. What Speaking the fuck? Are you guys edging. up for a Peabody Award or some? This looks <laughs> like this looks like an edging video. The start of one. Do you know what he's? You know, the whole time the podcast was happening, he'd walk in, he'd point to his watch like this, he'd just be like, "What the fuck's yeah. going on?" He was sitting in front of me while we're talking about Theo Fleury. He told me three forty-five. Okay, when I had guests on, the, I told him a time. That was the time. This is the shortest TV show ever. What are you talking about? And by the way, I uh, I feel bad for Theo Fleury. Why? Yeah, everybody because does. he's never going to get over what happened to him in his life life and uh mm -hmm. now it's starting to affect his logic it's mm -hmm. very yeah. tragic yeah. yeah um what what do you what do you see like because obviously you know you're uh you're a, you've got some common sense you've been vaccinated uh and you see guys like that that are kind of traipsing around and they're going down that fucking rabbit hole and you know their history and you and, and guys like you and me have lots of quarter to give guys like that a little bit of room to breathe because we know they've been through some shit right but like yeah, when you I mean, when you see is, when go ahead go ahead no no well, go ahead it's it's a paper passport I mean, what does he think? They're putting a chip in a kid and somebody's going to hack I it think and he, crack your kid? Like, I think he does. I, 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 we actually, I'd say once a day on our show, um, th either this thing, the podcast or my radio show, I, I'm in touch with somebody that thinks that legitimately thinks that there's a chip in the vaccine and two, that the government is, actually injecting everybody with the plans on killing us. And I don't know, you don't, where do you start? You, you can't, there's no, there's no starting point on trying to fix that kind of thought process. No, unfortunately, right? I, I, I think Theo thinks that you, you, that you can be tracked if you get the vaccine. I, I actually, from what I've read, it looks like that's what he actually believes. Well, if that's what he believes, he needs help. Yeah, he probably does. You know, and yeah, uh, and I wonder that when I go ahead, go ahead, Mikey. Well, he got a lot of help. I mean, he did get a lot of help, and uh, so. mm -hmm. this is like some kind of uh, opportunity he's been waiting for to rally uh, every nut in the country. And mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it's not a good thing. I mean, I happen to be in love with somebody who isn't vaccinated, and. Uh, 
The reason she's not is because she had a health issue a couple of years ago, and she's afraid to it. It's not that she's anti-vax, but she is upset about the passport. And I got to tell you, man, I couldn't believe it. I was in London on Wednesday. 30 minutes after Ford announced the passport, there were 2,000 people at the corner of Wellington and uh, Wellington and what was it? Commissioners. And none of them had masks on. Like I thought to myself, Jesus, you know, you're all going to get it now, or you're going to, or 25 of you are going to get it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they were, I couldn't believe they got there that fast. Like I tell you, we could all take organizational skills from nuts (laughs) because it's amazing how, it's amazing how quickly they rally around each other. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's wild to watch. Like, but it all comes from, and I'm trying to fucking take a lighter tact into, into this kind of stuff because like, I, and we talked about it earlier, Mikey, it's, it, you know, the, the inability that, that people have to understand, you know, exactly what goes into making these people not trust anybody, right? Like yeah. I get where, where, where his comes from. Um, what I don't get is when guys like My him or other people. Yeah. My best friend is great, respected daughter, doctor. My best friends are all from high school. This guy's been one of my best friends since grade nine. He is the most ethical human being on the face of the earth. And, and you know what? If it's all right with everybody, I'll take my advice from him. And uh, he's telling me, one, there shouldn't be another shutdown. He said, uh, you know, the percentage of people vaccinated, he said, it's not uh, some of these other people out there don't get vaccinated. He said, you start looking at this as the flu. He said, it's going to be a booster shot once a year. He said, and the sooner people come to terms with that, the better they're going to be. And you know, I got to go with what he said. But that just fuels a lot of the conspiracy theories, though, right? Like, as soon as soon as soon as you give them that information, somebody that's already on the path of, of the mistrust to the point where they're you know, they're not going to get it and they, you know, they're, they're rallying and they're gathering at this corner or that, or standing in front of a fucking hospital. As soon as you give them that information, listen, there's a booster shot coming. They don't make the connection between the fact that the unvaccinated have been spreading a virus and it's been growing and getting stronger. No, they just say that's, they just look at that and go, Hey, the, the, that's proof it doesn't work. Right. Yeah. Like that's proof Didn't that you work. guys are all sheeple. See, yeah. Fucking you idiots. <laughs> now we got to get a fucking booster shot every yeah. six months. And all we're doing yeah. is putting money into big farm. I, I that yeah. all that is, is just, so again, like I said, I, I said it earlier, you weren't on Bullard, but I'm like, uh, first off, I I've never gotten into an, a discussion online or on the radio over the phone with somebody with the idea that I was going to change their mind. I've never had that standpoint where, Hey, listen, whatever I say, uh, it's, it's going to have some sort of magical impact on, on these people that don't believe what I believe. I've never from that standpoint, like I've never had that sort of position when I get into these arguments, I always just sort of do it from the, from, from the perspective of uh, this is kind of entertaining. Oh, here's another crazy. (laughs) Ooh, there's my night. Get me a beer. Right. Uh, Well, the conclusion, uh, go ahead. uh, But I was going to say now it's gotten to the point where it's just, it's, it's slowly killing me and and I, Mm. I, I can't do it anymore. And I, I think that's where our public officials need to get to that, the realization. And, and the sooner they step up to, you know, the podium and say, we're done. We, we can't help you. It, yeah. it worked. And we got 75% of the population double vaxxed. We're going to take care of them. The yep. rest of you, I, and I know it sounds awful. The rest of you, I don't know what to do with you. So... Mm-hmm we're just going to limit your access to, to every activity we can at this point. I mean, what, what and kind it of sounds message? fucking horrible to yeah, say but what that kind of, now, but I think that's our next do, step. What kind of message do you need? We just thin the herd, yeah. you know? And yeah. uh, by the way, here's my assumption. Pro-Trump, anti-vax. That's yeah. Every person I talk to who's anti-vax is pro-Trump. 
and fucking way into Bitcoin, dude. You know that? Like yeah. every single one of those guys is like, yeah, is like yeah. vaccine. Fuck Trump's the best. By the way, buy Bitcoin. Yeah. Get yeah. Bitcoin right now. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 the same guy. It's the same person, right? Like we we can see these people. We can see the profile. We can see these individuals. But like like you guys, right? We remember a time when we didn't fight about fucking vaccines. We just assumed everybody was smart enough to be able to go and get vaccinated, go get their boosters, MMNR, uh, whether it's polio, whatever. Fuck, I got vaccinated for uh, hepatitis the other day because I'm like, I don't ever want to get hepatitis. So I went and got the hepatitis vaccine. I got because the shingles. That was you gotten the shingles one yet? Totally have the shingles one too. I'm like, give me all the vaccines you can give me because it's really important to me that I guys. protect myself from yeah. those things. Yeah. Sorry, Mike, what were you going to say? I had shingles, and let me tell you something. You don't want it. It's fucking awful. It yeah, was a nightmare, and David Letterman almost lost his eyesight over it. Yeah, he, he got had it to go to, he had to go to Britain for special treatment. I mean, he had it, he had it bad. He was off for a month, and uh, it nearly went to his eyes. So, you know, so if a, a doctor tells me, take this, and you won't won't get that, that what is his incentive to lie to me or hers by the, mm -hmm. by the way our female doctor or hers what's what's their incentive to lie to mm -hmm. me i mean yeah. pharma isn't paying doctors and take for dinner to get them to give the vaccine mm -hmm. it's, it, mm -hmm. this, this i don't know you know there this, is this elements of is, that it, it, but but again I, I i again i think the overall sort of if if you put up if you, a blank you can make a blanket statement about about um about vaccines and one is somebody making money from it F fucking rights they are um oh, yeah. and uh you, but that's but you know what you know what Aunt, hold it let me just let me be just one of the richest companies in the world because of this absolutely but let me back that are. up but let me does let's it, back does that, that up mean a little it doesn't bit work? because it doesn't mean it doesn't it, well, work Exactly. And, and, and it works like all the vaccines work. Backing that up just a couple seconds, right? The reason why, and if you're already paranoid and you don't trust because you've got some trauma in your life, you're going to assume that the only reason they're telling us about these booster shots is because they want to sell more vaccines. And you already don't trust Big Pharma. You don't trust the fucking government. So I get that part. I'm not making excuses for any of these cats because I find it all fucking crazy. Like, I, I really do. And I said that in the piece about Theo Fleury. Like, we need to understand where the paranoia comes from. But at the same time, it's still fucking crazy to me that yeah. people are saying, yeah, everything, I'm not interested. No matter, no matter what. No matter what. Everything's about greed now. And now people are equating this with greed. Uh, you know, Pfizer should have done an ad campaign. Hey, you trusted us with your heart on. Take this. You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah. you didn't even question us when we told you we were going to give you a hard on. I yeah. wonder how many of those anti-vaxxers have been plunking those blue pills every weekend. Sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's yeah. so much hypocrisy. There's been just a ton of it, too. That's the other mm -hmm. frustrating thing to watch. Right. It. I mean, it. It's it's rampant. It's running rampant, right? Like that Joe yeah. Rogan statement the other day on Instagram. I was just like, and I'm a Joe Rogan fan. I listen to him, and I've I've been a fan for years. But I, the ivermectin thing and the 15 other fucking drugs he's taking just to avoid the vaccine. I'm like, holy shit! Did somebody not? Did you not play this from one of your producers? Yeah. Like, yeah, no. are they that scared of you now? Like, did somebody you in your what? camp did? The way I like. I like but I don't want to hear anything from a guy I suspect is a juicer, you know? Well, yeah, yeah. that's the other thing. The guy, but no, he admits it. He's, he's on every, he's firing more chemicals into his body than any fucking human on the planet right now, but no, he won't yeah. take the vaccine. Like how fucked is that? Like, do you not see the hypocrisy in that Joe? You're a smart guy. Like it's insane mm -hmm. to me. What did you, what did you make of, what do you make of Rogan? Um, Mike, uh, you've done a, a talk show. You've been a talk show host for fucking one of Canada's best for decades. But what what do you, what do you make of not just what he said, but like a guy with that kind of influence doling out medical advice like that? Bottom line, you, you, if you if you've been on too long, and too popular, you get to a point where you believe your own bullshit, and you not believe your own bullshit. 
it's important to you that your entire audience buy your bullshit. It's like Dr. I mean, this guy's one of the biggest assholes I've ever seen in my life. And, and he, and anything, and it's another problem, man. This guy gets behind something, and then a week later, you find out he made 10 million bucks by doing it. You know, yeah. so that's why people are suspecting everything now. Because there's so much ulterior motive out there. But the other issue is, I don't, I don't think it's just the vaccine. And rightfully so, especially in this country, nobody trusts the media anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, did you yeah, see my that dad, story in the, did my you see the story? Said to me, which story in Rolling Stone? The one in Rolling no, Stone? the one in the Toronto Star on Barry's Bay. No. I mean, they were practically accusing this joint of being typhoid Mary. 12, what is it, no, 12 COVID say. cases here, and based on the population, they said they're going to be the hotbed that takes the whole country down? You know, it, w- it was the biggest piece of BS I ever read in my life. Hmm. You know, yeah. and and it was in the, well, it was in the star. I mean, that was bad <laughs> enough, but, uh, you know, the guy was in Edmonton. He's never set foot in the place. Yeah. It's just, and, and I think that's the point people are at now. They're just going, you know what, I don't care what anybody tells me. I'm not believing any of it, which Mm -hmm. is too bad for credible people. But Mm -hmm. I mean, when is a doctor, a nurse or a frontline worker, not a credible person? Well, yeah, risk their lives during this pandemic are now no longer credible people. I had a conversation with my dad. He uh, he he we had to talk. There was Uh, that lying fucking scumbag. So my dad, my dad, we got into it over COVID and he's, he's vaccinated. He's not an anti-vaxxer, but he's also sort of of the opinion that a lot of people are that our reaction to this is, is overblown. And then he pulls out the, and the media, they're, they're, they're making too much of it. And I had to remind him that I'm in the media. Um, And then I told him, I said, so they shut the whole world down, Dad. Like, I, we can have a discussion about the nuances of of whether or not they made the right decision here or there. Did they do it too late? Did they do it too soon? Should they shut borders down? But here's where you lose me. The media reports on news. Right. And the media, you can't expect them not to report on something that shut the entire fucking world down. Right, <laughs> and when people... well, you know what? People are sick and tired of hearing about this pandemic thing. So today we're going to talk about, I mean, it, it just doesn't work that way, dad. Like, uh, you know what I'm saying? And, and I, but so for you to, for, for me to have that conversation, that would, that one drives me fucking so insane. That the media too. is making too much about it. And the other one what? is uh, the other one is when people were telling me the government was behind it. I said, "Okay, so you've been locked in your house for a year. I got news for you: thirteen percent of nothing is nothing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> HST alone, <laughs> HST alone has cost them billions of dollars. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, what, and about, Bill- what about the fact that all these restaurants went out of business that were paying business tax? Yeah, like what was it? Sixty-two restaurants in Toronto alone, maybe 62%. higher." Is it 62 percent of uh, Toronto fuck. restaurants have shuttered? Yeah, yeah. sixty it's- and over sixty five percent of small business in Canada, and and then you can add on to that the conspiracy. Like if you're if you're going down the road of the conspiracy things and the government's after you, they want to kill you. Uh, I go back to what Bill Burr said a couple of weeks ago. Where he's like, "Do you really think that the government wants to kill eighty percent of the smartest people on this planet and be left with a bunch of trailer pigs?" I don't <laughs> right. think so. Right. Right. Exactly. That's the other like, it, it, like, are those are those the dumbest versions of us are telling us that we're dumb and you think that the government wants to kill everybody else? Come on, Listen, kids. Man, in, in a couple of weeks, we got to get rid of asshole and we got to replace them with asshole number two mm-hmm. or asshole number three. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I don't even know what the hell to do this time around. Oh, you're you not remember? alone, Mike. We spent the first 25 minutes of this podcast talking about. Um, I mean, what, what's your strategy on voting? Is, is it along party lines anymore? Fuck. Does anybody like, I, I know you well enough just based on the conversations we've had on this podcast. And I'm pretty sure you're a lot like me and everybody else that I know. There's no party out there for, for, nope. for me. There's nobody representing my views on, and thoughts on things. It just, 
it doesn't exist. So However, you're going I am thrilled. I am thrilled by the fact, Dean, that Maxime Bernier sends me personalized notes every other day. <laughs> did you get did you get that email today? Did you get oh the email? I, I Hello, Dean. Today. I got one Friday, and it always starts out, <laughs> "Dear Mike." I've never had one of those from uh, Justin or Aaron. And by the way, I'm also I can't believe how I grasped onto the fact that Aaron O'Toole served 12 years in the military. All of a sudden, I viewed that as, hey, maybe I should give this guy my vote just because he served 12 years in the military, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I'm going, well, maybe I should vote for this guy. And I, I, don't, I don't feel confusion at election time normally. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I just, I, I don't feel it. And the options are so severely bad yeah. that, and I'm not going to throw my vote away. And I got to vote for somebody. Yeah. I could put up with this guy for four years if it means we're going to get rid of the boy prince. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You just said, you know what? I was listening. I, I was listening. He did. I was listening to, um, and, and you know what? You're, you're, I'm so glad that we're talking about it because I was, I was listening to O'Toole yesterday. You, you know how like a week ago he came out against, he's like, I'm going to repeal the, 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 the firearms assault thing. He's like, I'm going to fucking get rid of it. But no, fire, we want firearms. And he was, and there's a video of him when he was Fat O'Toole. I like Fat O'Toole better than Skinny yeah, O'Toole, by the way. Yeah, fat, like Fat O'Toole. You know why? Because you can identify with him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, less and less, but I, I do appreciate a good big fella. Um, but it, it, at the same time, I'm, I'm listening to this, this cat, and he's like, yeah, we're going to repeal the firearm ban. Uh, you know, the assault rifle ban that they put in place and handgun ban that they put in place a couple, of, which I happen to really appreciate about that, this government. Like, it's maybe one of the only things. Yeah. And, yeah. um, and, and then yesterday, oh, they asked him about it again, and O'Toole's like, we're not repealing anything. I've never said that once in my life. And I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, he, he's treating the election like he's on Tinder. You know where you lie that you lie to people about your profile, and then you change it every day. And you like, if you want to pick a fucking prime minister, like you're picking a fucking date or someone to bang on Tinder, go ahead. I mean, you know, it, there, there are adults in the room like us that go, fuck, we need to vote for somebody. We're not going to spoil our vote. We know how important this is. But are you going to vote for the boy Prince who hasn't given a fuck about anything he said? He just likes saying it. So everybody identifies with it. Or are you going to give your vote to this guy who lies his dick off every time someone corners him just so he can grab a few more votes? Like it, it, if he's going to lie on the campaign trail about something he said a week earlier, do you think he's going to lie when he gets into office and go, I didn't say that. I'm not doing that. Fucking right. He will. And yeah. so you've got people like us standing here going, we've got a ballot and we also have some influence and we can tell people how to vote. Uh, but the one thing that, that I don't share with any of these guys to what you said earlier, Mike, I share no values with someone who believes in hypocrisy as a fucking strategy, like none, zero. And by the way, uh, I'll tell you right now, they have no use for people like us. They have no use. They don't want people like us to run. They don't want people who think on their own are not political and have made somewhat uh, of a life for themselves in, in private business. Because that used to be the rule of thumb. But today, that is a liability for you because uh, all you're going to wind up being is a backbencher whose opinion is not valued because they don't want you in the room. Mm -hmm. And that's the saddest part about the election process now. Good people are going, I'm not doing this. I'll yeah. kill somebody the second day. You know? Yeah. And, and that's it's the part that really breaks my heart. So then we're voting for semen retention guy, right? Like that, right, that guy's exactly. on the ballot. We got a exactly. drummer from a fucking heavy metal band and he's yeah. maybe 25. He's running like, I, and, and I like the kid, nice kid, but mm -hmm. all I can see is, um, you know, him in a band called striker. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, like, uh, and that guy's running like mm -hmm. that's the, our options are just, it's insane. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's fuck. We've done it to ourselves, right? Like I, I think that that's the that's the thing here is that like you know I, I go back and forth. I don't know if you saw the videos coming out of France yesterday of like all these anti vaxxers that bum rushed them all, and French police were beating the shit out of all these shoppers for because you got to be double vaxxed. They've got a really strict vaccine certificate policy in Paris and all of France, and I'm like. You know, and it, that's why our cops haven't been beating the shit out of people here, because it's a terrible look when you're saying to people, hey, listen, we want you to be safe. But if you don't get back home right now, we're going to beat the shit out of you with this billy club. It's, yeah. it, it, it's like the exact opposite of how you want to fucking treat people if you're trying to get them to be healthy 
or safe, right? That's not safe. If you're beating the shit out of people, telling them you're it's in their best interest. It's fuck. That's that's how I grew up. I had a dad like that for fuck's sakes for the first thirteen years of my life. Eh, sorry, you got to learn somehow. I'm going to have to hammer you with this belt to keep you safe. That doesn't work. It just doesn't work. No. And and it's not like you know the rest of us are sitting here going. Oh, well, uh, you know, I will just let everybody kind of fizzle out. But really, our reaction to it, to your point, Locke, to start the whole fucking thing, our reaction to it and our response to how fucking crazy everybody is, is the only thing I give a shit about anymore. Right. That's the only thing I can control is my reaction to it, which is why I don't hammer people on Twitter anymore, which is why I don't go after people for fucking having an opinion on who they should or should vote for. That's the one thing that fucking drives me crazy is I wake up to twit to Twitter the first hour of the day, I never look at my phone. When I finally look at it, the one thing in my head that gives me anxiety is, oh, it's going to be filtered, littered with people going, don't vote for this guy. That guy's terrible. Yeah. Don't vote for that guy. I haven't yeah. seen one person say, here's who you should vote for and here's why. Not one. That's how it used to be done, Mikey. Right? Listen, like, you remember man, the I remember a time when the silent majority was Bible thumpers. Now the silent majority is people with common sense and answers. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what we are, the silent majority. Yeah, because you're too scared to speak up, right? Like, it yeah. doesn't matter what, you're, what, what you say, you're going to get attacked. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you're, you're right. And then, and that, those fringe groups that you're talking about um, are so fucking loud and aggressive now. And they have these tools to, 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 so prey on people. That, you know, I, I went, I had to go shopping on the weekend and I had to go to home sense to buy towels and I walked in and they've just met re mandated masks and they had so this, just, you know, you look at my face. Like as soon as you said that, I went like this, Oh fuck okay. towels. I needed towels. towels. So I went yeah, to this, I went to the wife said they have terrible, good, good quality, but cheaper towels at home sense. So go to home sense. Well, and I'm walking up and I'm putting my mask on because I, you know, they told me I got to wear a mask again. So I'm going to wear a mask. And I walk in and there's a six, 15, 16 year old girl. She's got a full face shield on. She's got a mask on and she's standing there and she's the one that has to tell people to put a mask on if they don't have one. Yeah. And all I wanted to say to her was, you need to go home. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't worth it because no. Terry getting out of the Ram Dodge black Dodge Ram truck is going to come in here and he's going to start yelling at you when you say, sir, can you put your mask on? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's not worth it. Go home. Go by the go way, home, the, uh, Sarah Dean, the bottom line with most of these people, when these young people is I should have opened a fucking jar of peanut butter 10 years ago in a crowded room and killed them all. <laughs> I wish I had it done it. You know. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a good peanut allergy death joke. Oh, man. <laughs> By the way, somebody was dying from that when we were kids, and yeah, there was I didn't, no I didn't know. over the PA, and there was no. Do you remember that? Thing. Yeah. 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 I, I, dude, I remember like when my kids started going to school and I, and, and my eldest was like four and we go to the school for like preschool learning and there's like, this big sign on the door is like, we are a peanut butter free school. I'm like, we're not fucking sending them here. <laughs> like, I don't even know what that means. And my ex-wife's like, uh, some people have severe peanut allergies. I go, losers? <laughs> that, that, <laughs> like, are we talking about nerds? Is it like, as our kid, he eats peanut butter all the time. And she's like, yeah, but you don't understand. There's like peanut allergies. I'm like, who has these losers? Is that what is that who has these peanut allergies? By the way, it, uh, <laughs> when I see that sign that says, no, we're a peanut butter free, we're a peanut free environment, yeah. peanut butter free environment. I say in my head, geez, well, the translation on that is we don't want the children of trailer park trash to go to school here. <laughs> Basically, that's what they're saying. You know, if you had a peanut butter sandwich when I was 10, it was like, what the fuck? Is your dad out of work? Are you poor? Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember I that? Go to school with a that. peanut butter sandwich and you take it out, your peanut butter and jam. And I used to love it. But all my friends would be like, hey, did your dad get a job yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and little do we know. Yeah. It was bad enough when my old man came home with two Nehru shirts. Made us put them on. 
my brother and I were on the way to school and we had t-shirts on underneath and we hid them under a bush and then we went to school and put them back on on the way home. Like, fuck dad, what are you trying to do to us? What are you talking Dude, about? Dude, I remember they're sharp. in the 12th, in the, they're sharp. In, the, in like the fourth grade, my dad, I really wanted Reeboks and my dad came home with a pair of really sweet racer box. Yeah, yeah. When uh, I was a kid, I, oh, I don't know what's happening to me, sorry. When I was a kid, <laughs> if you had North Stars, oh yeah, you were dirt poor, <laughs> dirt fucking poor, and you would spend all. I don't even want to have this conversation. I had that pants that were shoe. bought at Sears with a drawstring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I got to turn it back over to James. He's getting very upset. All right, and Ted. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Here he is. Yeah. All right, Mike look, Lord, I, I've said this before, but doesn't he look like me if I was left in the dryer too long? <laughs> Doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, he does. Hey, you know, he looks way, like he looks like the meth. I don't know how he did this. What's that? But he has got a beautiful partner and two beautiful kids. I mean, his partner, the woman who had his children, is absolutely stunning. Is she really stunning? I've never seen, seen her. He won't show us. No, he'll never show us a picture of her. Yeah, he Not hides it. his life away from us. Yeah, big he's time. living. Yeah. In, you know what? He's living in a converted factory in. Like his nearest neighbor is eight miles away, and I know it's because he doesn't want her to meet anybody. <laughs> he's, he's, he's definitely <laughs> afraid that she's going to run away with some guy she meets. I know it. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. If I, I she just, sets her, if she looks at any other human being or meets any other man, it's over for James. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, there was anybody was with a driver's in license, my, and it's over. I was made to sleep in my car for two nights in the back forty. I'm allowed to come in and use the shower when she's out with the kids. <laughs> All right, is that boys, true? Is. Thanks, Good buddy. I'll talk to you soon. All right. By the way, uh, Locke, these are the shoes that my dad bought me too when when my friends made fun of me for being poor. Do you remember these bad boys? Do you remember I remember those cougars? cougars. Yeah. Did you have those? I think I had a pair of cougars. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> my mother made my clothes for me till I was 15. Get out of here! What? I'm kidding. Oh, she made you homemade clothes. Burlap. I wore burlap. Ah, <laughs> uh, must be nice having Bullard there, hey? I just saw something really awful. What? Uh, if you guys watch The Wire, Michael K. Williams was found dead in his New York City apartment. Somebody oh, else from no. The Wire passed away. Yeah. Uh, he was in that Steve Buscemi um, boardwalk period piece. Yeah, Boardwalk Empire. He Chalky was fucking White. great. In that. Yeah, I've Chalky never, White never Boardwalk. He's dead. Boardwalk. Board, yeah, he's he was found dead in his apartment. Um, I I didn't even click the link. It was a it was a New York Post thing. I'll click it though. Yeah, um, Michael K. Williams, Omar from the uh, the Wire. He's dead. He's an amazing actor. He sold the character on the Wire, a gay gangster who ripped off drug dealers, and everyone respected him. And he sold it, and he and he nailed it. Like that was like the best <laughs> role ever. Um. Drug paraphernalia was found in the five-time Emmy nominee's apartment, suggesting that the acclaimed 54-year-old actor may have fatally OD, possibly from yeah. heroin or fentanyl. It's a thing now, man. It's a thing. Like uh, I was doing, a, yeah. I was doing some reading on alcohol consumption in Canada. Doubled liver disease, doubled uh, opioid deaths, tripled uh, here in Canada over the past like two years. I mean, BC people are gonna, really bad. BC you know, I, like it was 17 yeah. yesterday or something like that. It was like fucking so hard to read. And, and, and when I see stories like this where a dude or someone dies under the age of 60 uh, and they seem to be in good health and they die at home, um, it's literally, you know, that's where my mind goes, right? Um, because I work with some of these cats and I worry about, I worry about a lot of people. I worry about a lot of people that have been through this fucking terribleness and, um, just haven't been able to find, you know, ways to enjoy their life in it and ways to thrive yeah. in it. Um, you know, people are so affected by everybody else as opposed to putting that time into becoming a fucking better human being, because that's the only insulation that you have from the world, right? You know, to yeah. be able to manage yourself in an unmanageable world, uh, is a really fucking tough thing to do. So, uh, I just absolutely fucking shocked that he's dead. That is unbelievable. <laughs> Uh, the other thing too, right? I think there's this sort of expectation about what 
drug overdoses and the the opioid crisis looks like right and and the mm. face of it and you know and and it's and it's this street on in Vancouver or downtown or they found somebody close to Boyle Street here in Edmonton and it's it's not it's a suburban thing too there's a lot of there's a lot of kids and and um you know and and people with full-time jobs and contributing members of society that are hopelessly addicted to uh, these pharmaceuticals and, um, and they succumb to the, the, the addiction and, and right. And then you got ambulances running into the suburbs of these cities, picking up bodies. Right. Don't you kind of feel like in like 25 years or something that they're going to talk about the pandemic and they're, they're actually going to be able to analyze and not, not to say that we did it wrong or whatever that we could have done differently, or we should have just let it be. And, and let people pass away from COVID because the number of ODs and all these other things was just so much higher. Like, I don't think, I don't know what the numbers are going to end up, but it would be interesting to see if someone could come up with a reasonable algorithm to predict those kinds of deaths because, you know, a lot, especially mental health stuff, like, you know, suicide yeah. attempts are apparently like just through the roof. I don't know if successful suicides are, but like, I know that attempts oh, are suicides like. suicides are up too. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirty thirty-five percent suicides up thirty-five percent. Here's a little uh, snippet from a, an article I read. This is just from your neck of the woods, um, Locke. Oh, March, we, re- September. we report this stuff on here all the time because we're three alcoholics doing a morning show in Edmonton. <laughs> so these yeah. things are like 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 uh, hand posts for you guys. Alcoholic hepatitis went up from eleven point six percent per ten thousand admissions to twenty. Sorry, not percent. Twenty two point one people out of ten thousand admissions double. Age of those patients also fell from an average of forty eight to forty three. The study found a large number thirty eight percent came from rural areas a figure that's nearly doubled as well. That's in Alberta. Uh, The same thing goes for the entire country of Canada, by the way, Uh, a little less. I think it was like 20 per 10,000, but, but uh, liver disease is doubled. Hepatitis is doubled. Uh, You know, uh, poison control uh, uh, calls to the hospital for uh, alcohol related OD, opioid related OD. I mean, those things are fucking serious. And, you know, it's funny because I was thinking about it when I read that article yesterday and I thought, fuck, did I ever quit pick like the perfect decade to quit drinking? Yeah, it was because a good I'd move. be dead. Strong move. I'd be dead. Like, I think about that yeah. all the time and I think about how I drank and I think about the way that I carried on and I think about what was important to me back then and what's important to me now and the external gratification of being able to numb the pain that you're feeling. Uh, was really the thing that I wanted to fucking get in control of, right? Like that was the only thing in my head. And so when we got into the pandemic two years ago, I was two years sober. I just celebrated four years a week or so ago, two weeks ago, maybe. I can't remember. Um, And I didn't celebrate it. It's not like I had a cake. I was just like, oh, fuck, I think today's the day. Like I think today's four years, which is cool, right? Um, And when I read those studies, I don't miss it. You know, I don't miss what it comes with. I don't miss... And, and with, when I work with people, I say this one thing, and it kind of makes sense to a lot of guys, and I think I've said it to you a lot. Literally, the only thing that you get, get out of, well, you know, we talk. Uh, the only thing you get out of getting drunk is literally 35 minutes of satisfaction. Uh, the night uh, the last forever, we think, but like people are dying now because they needed to get out of their own heads for 35 minutes. That's well, how bad life is. There's a bit more to to it for me they're putting a hundred million dollar expansion on the budweiser plant here in edmonton and i can be um well i should be thanked like i don't i don't need a statue or a fucking street named after me but no, no maybe a phone not. call from somebody from labat just going hey Dude, listen we really I was so- really appreciate your efforts during the pandemic and outside of the pandemic to yeah. help us put this expansion on this plant so we've made a All bottle opener that are shaped like your balls. Right? That's that you hold on to the sack. That would right? be nice. Yeah, it would be yeah. cute, wouldn't it? I would yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, just, wait till wait to this a, semen retention thing kicks in for me. My fucking balls are going to be twice the size. <laughs> Dean, while you were talking, I was thinking about the things that you were saying about uh, quitting drinking a couple years before the pandemic. I completely like Forrest Gumped um, the way I stopped drinking, which was a month before the pandemic existed, like Christmas 2019, basically. And um, and I, w- I weighed 205 pounds then too. And I, now I'm 160 and I don't drink. And it's weird because I've had this opposite experience of everyone else. And 
I, I realized that like when you were, when you were talking, I was thinking about, okay, 35 minutes of fun. Why? What, what would the rest of the time be? And I remember like mathematically trying to figure out how many drinks I could have before last call. Like and spending mm-hmm. time pondering that question while hammered at some bar, right? Or or even just at home wondering See, if that's, I could finish. That's just ridiculous to me because all that time you're spending trying to fucking calculate how many yeah. you could be drinking. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Get your shit together. Yeah. I love it. I love that we've got uh one guy who's off it, one guy who's like just off it, another guy who's like, I'm a big fan. <laughs> so it's never going to end. But dude, here's the thing is you've been able to thrive through the pandemic and it's not about drinking because your peace of mind and, and where you're at mentally are good. You know, like you you have things and put things in your life to be able to kind of handrail you, whether it's yoga, you got a great wife that keeps you in line, your kids have been home all summer. You dive into responsibility, but there's a huge portion of society that uses that kind of shit to not just not dive into responsibility, to not feel good about themselves. They do it to get away from the things that they can't control, right? And and fuck, you could not control this pandemic. That's why people no. wear, you know what I mean? I oh, did. My, my drinking did increase while I was. Um, <laughs> my drinking did increase during the pandemic. We talked about that, right? How much? Um, well, like, like, I like, it, kind of go through it for me. Yeah. Give I'd me a say, pre-pandemic week's worth of beer and then give me like a pandemic week's worth. Of I can money. give you a better idea because uh, I've thought about this from a percentage perspective. I think my my drinking has gone up. Uh, and it and it depends like week to week, month to month. But I think between ten and twenty percent. We had a conversation on the other on the air the other day about the fact that a lot of a lot of it can be contributed to the fact that like when I went out because I don't drink and drive, I I have a a two beer limit. If I go to an event like a station thing, I'll have two beer. And I'll have a bite to eat and then I'll drive home. That's it. If I have three, I'm leaving my car and I'm taking an Uber. It just, I've like, listen, back when I was a kid, we drank, we drank too much. Right. Mm -hmm. And we drank and we got behind the wheel when we shouldn't have. And when I had kids, I was like, I can't fucking do this. Like, this is just stupid. So I, I've kind of done that. And we had a lot of events during the pandemic. And then you'd go home, maybe have dinner or whatever And you might have a couple of beers before bed, but with the pandemic, I was home all the time. I never had to worry about the driving thing. So my drinking went up because I didn't have any, we didn't have any fucking thing to do. We had no events, nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's part of the percentage increase. And now we've been a little bit busier in the last couple of months. We're doing more things. My drinking has actually gone. Well, at least my drinking at home has gone down because I'm home less and I don't have as much time to drink. So I think that was what I didn't, I, I feel for people that were using drinking as a coping mechanism. I've never felt that I, I I've had that issue. Um, I enjoy yeah, it's drinking. Weird. Like I know, I know you and you're drinking and I'm not talking about this subject. Like I didn't bring it up because I'm, I'm here to help. <laughs> like fuck, you don't need any help. You're no, a good no. dude. Like you, you've got your shit together. There's oh, a large fuck. portion. I, let's use a little bit. Like how many fucking? Let's be little bit of I need a lot of help. Yeah. yeah um, no. No. But yeah. but like I, I, that's. I'm never here to give people. It's the thing. Is you know, I can't tell you that you shouldn't drink. I can't tell you drink too much because the only person that can tell anybody that is the person who actually identifies whether or not they should probably stop or keep going. What I'm saying is, is that like the environment over the past two years has absolutely incubated. And and you just gave a fucking great example of why, right? Like yeah. we don't have to go to baseball tonight so I can have a beer at four o'clock. Yeah. We don't have to go to someone's house. I don't have to go to work. Noon. I can have 12. <laughs> like, and then, yeah. and then on top of it, booze works. Like you fucking want to get numb. You don't yeah. want to feel anything. You don't want to enjoy that's what that does. That's why it was fucking invented. Like it was invented for surgery and to clean equipment. That's if, it, it just, if, it, that's what they do. If uh, I can, I, if I could just add a quick attachment to what I was saying before, I don't, I don't want to make it seem like I've nailed this pandemic. My, my, uh, my, my, oh, shroom, my, my shrooms consumption is like just eclipsed to everything I've ever done before the pandemic. And then, but when I stopped drinking, I like, I was like, what is, what are all these things? And they were feelings, right? 
and like anxiety and things like that. And, and so I was riddled with anxiety. And right at that moment, my shrink's like, I think, uh, James, we should put you on some amphetamines now for your ADHD. And I'm like, okay. So then I did that. And then my anxiety was just like heightened. And I was just walking around like this. I, I get, I still get all fra- frazzled when, when, I don't know if you guys are like, you probably not like this cause you've done this stuff for like decades, but I have to mentally prepare before a podcast because I've noticed that when I don't, I'm not that effective on the show, but when I do things go, go okay, I might not be the greatest, but like n- n- blurred, like <laughs> for the first 45 minutes yeah. was sitting in front of me, like, James, what are we going to fucking do? And I'm like muting him. And I'm just sitting, you probably saw Dean and Lachlan. Like I'm just sitting here like this. I'm shouting at someone while muting my mic. Yeah, I thought you were talking to your wife. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm sure Mike we Fuller's do down a, there flirting with her right thing. now. Probably. We should do a thing where we videotape you mentally preparing for this because I need to see that. You know what it would look like? You know what we should do? An aerial shot of my place and then me just represented by a dot. And what you'll see is me pacing back and forth in each room, then trying yeah. to find stuff by going to each room 17 times because I can't find it because I guess my ADHD medication is working somehow. But yeah, and, and that's what I do. I pace around. See, I, I don't have a lot of, uh, and I, I'm very lucky. I don't have a lot of anxiety. I, I never have. I, uh, and so when, and, I, and I have substance abuse problems and I know that I, I, I honestly, if I wasn't drinking, I would be doing something else to extreme. That's sort of the way I look at it. So if I, something somehow- bad. Yeah, I, they, we're, we're the same. Like, dude, I, I when I gave up drinking, I started smoking cigarettes at 44. Like, I got to do yeah. something bad, right? You know so what I mean? I, again, so that's how I've justified it, right? Like, yeah, not that I need to justify my, my alcoholism, but I look at it from that perspective. I can still, cont- I'm still very functioning, and I, I, and I have no problems getting to work, getting up, going to bed, doing all of these things that I need to do. I'm right. quite effective as a human being. Uh, but I smoked when I started smoking, I fucking smoked hard. And I know if there would have been another drug introduced to my life, I would have been very good at that one as well. So mm-hmm. here's the thing. I'm 51 now. And if I decided for some reason that booze was a problem and that I needed to eliminate it from my life, I know I would just come up with some fucking other thing to replace it. I, I just know that about my, my, and I, don't want to be a smoker again. That one would be an easy one because I fucking still think about that one. I still dream about smoking. It's and, fun. And I'm not going to become a heroin addict anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. I think everybody's, I think we lost you there, Jamesy. I think we lost you your audio. I'm I think sorry. Did. I muted myself. I just wanted to say that Sean Ashcroft, Sean Ashcroft is asking about the shrooms episode. And I just want to let Sean know that, listen, I tried to do a dry run last night by frantically typing a message while uh, look, looking at the pile of shrooms in front of me, asking you guys if you wanted to do just like a, a, a dry run podcast. And it was crickets. No one answered me for the, for the entire. I didn't even see it. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. You, you sent us something. I didn't I even missed, see it. I missed yeah. it. Are you sure you sent it to us? Yeah, no, I don't think maybe, you did. Maybe it was your spirit no. animal. I did. <laughs> the hedgehog. <laughs> Are you sure you sent it? No, yeah, no I'm I not. Did. Actually, I, I have no idea if I sent it at all. <laughs> uh, before we go, I do want to bring up <clears throat> maybe the comment of the day. This is from our guy, Ryan Lilly, from the Sheeple Shepherd podcast. Uh, you know how people can comment on different things. If you go to Dean Blundell TV on Twitch or if you go to Dean Blundell show on YouTube, uh, anywhere you get uh, download your podcast from, we're everywhere. If it's just the audio version, you can't see it. If you're watching us, you can. Um, Gloria piped in about masks. She says, your cloth or paper mask is a moist bacteria fungi infection collector that's made dirtier with hand-delivered germs that are easily sucked through your cloth or a paper fiber mask when you inhale. Ryan kindly replies, hey, Gloria, fuck off. <laughs> Right to the point. <laughs> hey, 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 Gloria, 
fuck I off. do enjoy how the the, the comments <laughs> quite often take care of themselves. Like yeah, they they're, really do. They're living this whole other world while we're doing what we're doing. It's it is actually kind of remarkable. It's it's fun to watch some days. Yeah, positive. Mike says uh, they named a beer after you, Locker. At least they should. Uh, that was followed by uh, our boy Ro- Rob, who hasn't drank since January 2020. That was nice. Uh, and then some guy says he hasn't had a drink since 4.15 p.m., which is nice. <laughs> so is, what happened to the shrooms episode? We still uh, need to do that. Yeah, we goes, pod. I would yeah. also like to know as well. Uh, and then Emily is like, this is literally t- uh, comment after comment. I've gone through so much weed, Emily says. <laughs> <laughs> See, if, if I Ryan, up, Ryan has that's another cool. good one too, the spinoff series one. Put yeah. that one up. That's hilarious. Bullard. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. should Bullard do a spinoff series. Bullard in the background. It's going to be killer. Yeah, we really have to mute him though. Yeah. If you don't mute him, it's not going to work out well. I, Thanks for doing this today. I boys. enjoyed cool. Bullard's interruption today. I, I mean, Me uh, he's not standing in front of me. Oh, I don't his mind. Hands yeah, yeah, and I don't yelling. Mind him. He was he was great on the show. His content is good, but like. Yeah, he's not good for my process, you know. <laughs> like he just, it's like he's like a have, he's like having a gremlin float around, yeah, like everywhere you go, trying to prepare for the show, and he's just yeah, he's there, weird, but like you're weird to too. You were, yeah, but I'm not. But, but if he, but I asked him uh, when I muted my mic once, I turned around and I'm like, when you had your show, and someone came up to you and was like poking you in the tummy or something just before you go on stage, would you like that? He's like, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> Then why aren't you getting what I'm saying? Like, because yeah, he doesn't care. That's something you haven't figured out yet. He doesn't yeah. give two <laughs> shits. I, I, I know. I should. I shouldn't have. Uh, I shouldn't have even suggested him coming on the show. To be honest. No, you should have. I loved it. I loved <laughs> yep, him loved being it. on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, James D. Fiore, Blackballed is the name of his podcast. You can get it anywhere you can find podcasts, including at <laughs> deanblundell.com. What's up? I was going to do laughing? the salute, and then I just realized how I felt right now, and I just went like this instead. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You don't want to be doing that salute either. That's how the semen retention guy meets his people. By the way, oh, he goes every, like this every video. He does this, the semen retention salute. I Did may not- go to the. I may go to the Lachlan. and just do this. Oh, just put the arm up. Yeah, yeah. remember this. See I this realized guy? that, that- look at- soldiers. Semen retention soldiers. This is I don't Semen look at him. retention soldiers. Uh, he, Semen blinked, retention he blinked soldiers. once in like 2018. <laughs> That's gotta be drugs. That's something. That's some and Ad- it might be Adderall. Adderall? No. Yeah. I don't know. Is that I'm on is Adderall? That, Does it look what? the same? Yeah, but know. how long have you been doing Adderall? Apparently it has like doing. major consequences <laughs> on your mental state. How long? No, you said doing like it's yeah, like it's a drug, like he's (laughs) snorting it. Medication, um, uh, five months, something like that. What is that? The drug Trump apparently has been on for years. What's Mm -hmm. the? It's an. They say some sort of amphetamine. Some people say it's Sudafed. Well, he he got caught buying Sudafed out of the UK, and it was apparently a higher concentration of Adderall or amphetamine or like whatever that is. Yeah. Um, and, and that was why he was, he wanted the one out of the UK. Cause they that's why he shit himself. Yeah. That's yeah. why he kept shitting himself. Like he had a guy, his buddy, Keith Schiller. That's what this is. He's been yeah. on something for a long, long like time. Ritalin. Some Ritalin sort of hat. Or yes. Yeah. And that's what that's that, because that's not normal that's side effects. No. Maybe not blinking for several <laughs> hours. At at a time. Soldiers. When you run your day with intention, it's easier to practice Look at semen retention. It's, I bet you both of his eyes are glass, and he just... <laughs> well, and he's kind of cross-eyed, too, which makes me think that there's something meta, like some sort of... <laughs> Look at him. Look really close at... Yeah. One eye is sort of looking at his nose. Yeah, One glass yeah. eye might have a fish in it, and it just distracts him. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. All right. That is uh, James D. Fiore. You can find him at uh, Blackball he's, Podcast he's or blackballmedia.ca. Office. Yeah, I know. This guy's Dude, running for. He's my favorite guy. He's my favorite new politician. His salute Who, is like, a little... There's no one to vote for. Everybody else is a lying sack of shit pretending to be serious. This guy's talking about making your balls full, and he's running for the PPC party in New Brunswick. He's my guy. I might actually vote Great for Great PR here. for Max Bernier. Great <laughs> PR. <laughs> Lachlan Cross is where you can find him on Twitter, uh, at Lachlan Cross as well. And if you're in the Edmonton area or not, uh, go and listen to him at 95.7 Cruise FM. He's the uh, morning show host of The Locker Room. Not just I know we've been on name. a long time, but I got to say, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to say this really quickly. 
Okay. I can't believe how many people are listening. We get numbers from outside of Edmonton and our streaming numbers have gone. And a lot of it has to do with this podcast because mm. I got a ton of people now that have found me through this Dean Blundell podcast and are listening to me from Ontario and back East. A, and, a few yeah. of my friends listened to you. I, I put them on to you uh, when you did the Bullard and me thing and they just continued to listen. So yeah. 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 yeah but so most I, of them call me, you. most of them send me messages and go, this is great. We love Lachlan, but can you stop pretending to do all the, the cheesy radio shit? Cause like I got a phone call this morning. He's like, Hey, does he always talk like this when he's on the radio? Hey, everybody. I don't talk like this that. This is 95.7 Cruise FM coming up in a minute. Guess that sound. It's a fart. You win okay, 100 bucks. On, that, would be, that would be hilarious if he ever uh, did a hosting duty for the Dean Blundell podcast if you were away. Yep. And he was like, hey, welcome to the Dean Blundell yeah, show. I'm your host, Lachlan Thanks for coming. <laughs> on the tents, we'll have a traffic update. Um, the other, Do you still the talk other like thing, that? Do no, you still I do talk not like talk that? like that. I stopped talking like that. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I think Listen I've to listened to your program Listen sometimes. To me. I don't talk like that. <clears throat> and you put that voice on. You do. You go deep voice. <laughs> you know what? Um, tomorrow, by the way, we are starting our new contest, our ratings promo, where we're giving shit from uh, uh, James P. White, the drunk alcoholic midgets yeah. apartment, and it's called The Locker Room, Dennis Sadness, Secret Sound of the Day. We'll do that just after the 8 o'clock news, everybody. <laughs> That's gonna be great. You just did it again. You just went full radio again. We'll do it after the six o'clock news, everybody. That's a tease. What By the way, fucking put it away. Is a tease. I don't. I That's cannot. A tease. Yeah, I can't it's do that here. And not only that, but stay tuned for the announcement of the grand prize. I'll tell you now. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a weekend in James's apartment. <laughs> but he's he has to stay with you. Oh shit! Pick the most annoying asshole you can find. Bullard. I want you to find the, the biggest asshole on the planet Bullard. and make Bullard. sure that they're with Bullard. 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 Fly Bullard him out. Jimmy yeah. would be great content. Oh my god! Tell, oh oh my god! Those two. <gasps> Bullard oh will show god. him. That, that's how he'll shake his hand. He'll just be like, "Come here." The other thing, <laughs> just pick him up. And Bullard would have James smoking in about a half an hour. <laughs> oh, that would be dope. Do it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thanks, guys. it. Have a Thanks great day soon. That is Lachlan Cross. That is James D. Fiore. My name is Dean, and that is it for us. Have a great day, everybody. We really appreciate you being here. Uh, and don't forget, you can find us on YouTube, uh, DeanBlundell.com, and there you can sign up for our newsletter, and you can also – Dean Blundell Show on YouTube, by the way. Uh, Dean Blundell TV on uh, Twitch. That's where you can see it. We stream live every day. You can interact with us through Twitch, through YouTube, through Periscope, wherever you get your – Whatever this is. Um, anyway, thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks to our friends over at Ed's Fine Imports. His gitch on your body. That's what you get, fellas, when you go to edsfineimports.com. Uh, boxer briefs made for dudes. Pouch in the front. Super breathable. Unbelievable fabric. Very soft for the fellas. Make sure you go to edsfineimports.com. Use promo code GITCH3. Super easy. And then you get an extra pair of underwear. Order three. Get the fourth for free. Promo code GITCH3. Easy Auto Financial and our friends at easyautofinancial.ca want to make it easy for you to get a car. Go to Easy Auto Financial today uh, by going to easyautofinancial.ca. Make sure you uh, sign up. Make sure you do all the legwork. They'll do it with you. It's totally free of charge. If you're looking for a car and your credit's shit, or if it's great and you just want a fantastic experience buying a new vehicle that uh, takes all the guesswork out of it, including your financial guesswork, go to easyautofinancial.ca today. Domination is what we use. It is artificial intelligence for people that want to produce content, and it's super easy to use. Go to dmntn.com, dmntn.com, and uh, try them for free. Totally free to try. You'll get addicted to it. Super easy to be able to produce content with it. You'll love it. Again, Go to domination.com, dmntn.com today. And our friends over at Blue Microphones, thank you very much for all the stuff that you've done for us. And everybody here at deanblundell.com and the network, we use all your stuff. I use the Blue Yeti X and, of course, these MoFi headphones. Uh, Grammy winners. Never won a Grammy, but this is as close as I'll get, so I'll wear them. And they're terrific. Um, super easy to use. They've got a full line of stuff that complements gaming, podcasting, streaming, Anything you need to do it, go to bluemike.com or at Blue Microphones on Twitter. DeanBlundell.com, part of the Blue Crew. Thanks, everybody, for being a part of the show. Really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Try to be nice to each other. Or not. I don't care. I just take care of myself. It's literally the only thing you have to do. Take care of you. Bye. <laughs>